Welcome to this course. In this exciting course, you will develop 10 web applications by using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript technology. So if you acquire a fundamental understanding of these technologies, then you can easily follow this course. So allow me to introduce the projects that we will be building throughout this course. So the first application that we are going to build is the FT calculator application. So you can see it has three labels, one button and three input types and then we have this maturity amount which will be show the amount with the results. Okay, so here we are going to add the amount. So I'm going to enter here like 1 lakh rupees and if I enter the interest rate as 6% and if I enter here tenure years is going to be 1 then we are getting the 6000 rupees interest on one year of the FD. The next project that we are going to build is the password generator application. So you can see right now it's having the default value in the input type is 8. This is also an input type but we are going to restrict it with the HTML code so that we don't enter the text inside of this particular input type. Then you can see we have these check boxes. If I include a lowercase character then we are getting a 8 length of the password. If I just simply uncheck this lowercase then we are getting the password with just numbers and uppercase. If I include the symbols and lowercase and increase the length of the password, then we are getting the random password according to these input checkboxes. So our third project is Vowel Checker application. You can see this is the Vowel Checker application. It has a nice hover effect on this card. We have this heading text area input. Then I have this button and the result element to display the result of the operation. So if I enter here a like a Udemy course, I click on this check vowel, then you can see we have these five vowels here. So it's going to display the result as 5. Okay, the next project, which is the fourth project we are going to build is the age calculator. So you can see this is the age calculator. Then we need to select the DB, means the date of birth. If I select here a date of birth like uh, October and just I need to select the year as well. If I select my date of birth year, which is 1995 and then October, then this is going to be 25. Click on the age and you can see my age is 27 years which is correct. The fifth application that we are going to build is the tip calculator. So here we need to add the amount. So suppose we have actually spent $100 and we tip percentage is going to be like 5. So if I calculate it then you can see we need to pay the $5 of the tip amount. And the total amount that we need to pay is $105. So this is the fifth application that we are going to build it by using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Sixth application is the simple to do list application. So it's just having a single input type then there is a heading and then simple button when you click on it then the to do will be added. So if I enter here like first task or first to do. Okay so first task to do if I click on add then you can see the to do is added to the list and it also have this cross button which will actually use to delete the task. So if I enter here a like second to do and if I click on the add then you can see the two to do is actually added. If I click on this then you can see it's actually removed and if I click on this button this to do is also removed. So our seventh application is the digital clock application. We actually going to build it by using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Again I am repeating we are going to create this nice card like structure. So it is little tricky to develop. So we are going to do this with the use of CSS and we are going to update the timer by using the JavaScript. So this particular project doesn't take any input. So right now it's going to display the time in a 24 hour format. Our eighth application is the expense tracker application. So it's just like a to do application but with some modification. So if I click on the ad then you can see it has a like alert. So inside of that we need to first enter the expense description. So it's going to like food. So it's going to be the food description. If I click on OK then there is another alert will pop up. So inside of that you need to add the amount. So it's going to like $500 you have spent on your foods. If I click on add then you can see the list is actually added and then you also have this particular cross button so on click of that it is going to remove the let me add another expense so it's like like our water or if I just simply say that the internet internet expense click on ok then the amount is going to like $40 if I click ok then you can see this is our internet expense if I want to delete it then simply click on this cross button it's going to delete the list of the expense. The another application which is the ninth application that we're going to develop is just a pop-up application. So if I click on this and you can see this is a pop-over appears. So if I click on the close then you can see the pop-over close. So we are going to build this application by using CSS because most of the code is actually done with the CSS. Our last application of this course is the ASCII code generator. So if I just simply refresh here to actually give you the fresh overview of the application. So this is the ASCII code character detector application ASCII code slash unicode character. So if I enter here a character then it's going to return 
whether the entered character sk character no or a unicode character so that's for all the projects that we are going to build in this course so by the end of the course you will have 10 fully functional html css and javascript projects in your portfolio but you will also acquire a solid understanding of essential javascript concepts i will guide you through each line of the code providing step by step explanation of the code and its core concept so enroll now to start your exciting coding journey Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to build the FD calculator application. So let me show you the final product that we are going to build. So this is our FD calculator. You can see when I just hover over it, then you can see there is a nice background in this particular card. And we have three fields here, means the three input type. The first is actually going to accept the principal amount. Then the second is for the interest rate and the Third one is tenure in years, which actually how many years you want. And the fourth one is actually our, and then the fourth one is our button, which is input type button. And then we have a result, which actually displays the final output of the maturity amount. So here, if I just change the value to like 5 lakh, I think it's like 50. Okay, so it has five zeros. So it is actually lag. And if I just click on calculate, then you will see the rate of interest is actually you earn like 33,000 to 50 rupees for one year and if we change the rate of interest like 7.0 it's also going to accept a value which is like integer type or maybe a float value so if i click on it then you can see 5 3 means you going to earn the interest rate is like 35,000 for one year and if i increase here too then the interest will be increased to 70,000 so this will be the application if i refresh then the values will be going to into default which is a placeholder text okay so we are going to build this application so first open your visual studio so you can see i have already done it i have actually created three files inside of this particular folder so here we have three files all of them are empty so i'm going to click on this so that you can see more clearly and also i'm going to increase the zoom a little bit so coming back to our index.html so here i am going to add the code which is sign of exclamation which is an emit abbreviation so if i click on it then we get our placeholder text so if i type here like fd calculator actually i have given the name to our application which is fd calculator so this is a basic template given by visual studio code for the responsiveness like three meta tags has been added so these are actually used for like for the responsivity purpose and these are actually like compatibility for the edge browser and it is actually a unicode character format which has lot more character set more than 255 character set i think which is more powerful than the sk character set so these are pretty basics but we don't need to worry about these because we need to build our application which is ft calculator so first we need to add some html elements so i'm going to minimize it because we need to get the reference what we are actually going to build and first here i will be adding a one h1 element just to check whether everything is working properly or not so hello fd i just go to write this text and here we have a live server extension you should install this live server extension because it will make our life little bit easy so if i click on go or live and then we will see uh output moment so here we can see everything is working fine so another thing i want to do is actually link the css part of the code so i'm going to write here style.css and then also i'm going to add the script tag to add the script so here i will be type src and then here i will be adding the script.js so all of these now are connected with our index.html so let's get started by adding the element inside the html part so first i need a div so here i will be using a div and inside of this div or i can use a shortcut which is by default available inside the visual studio code which is emit so if i just type it here container like dot container and if i press tab then i get a div tag that has a class container so this will actually get a little bit for the faster so i'm not going to use too much emit in this particular course because this course is for the beginner purpose only means beginner can easily follow along so i'm not going to confuse you by using the emit although i'm using a just small emit 
like uh, shortcuts so that it will be easy for me to complete the course more quickly so after getting this container it's time to actually h1 tag which is for the heading so i'm going to add the h1 tag because this is actually an heading fd calculator so we want to do that so that is the reason we need to add here an h1 tag and inside of this i need to add the text fd calculator so this is our fd calculator and inside of this we need to add the div element so it's going to like div and under inside the div we are going to use a label so here we are going to type the label and inside of this first we need to add the principal and then the text which is going to be principal amount okay so now the principal amount is done then after the label we need an input so input actually is going to be like input type so here i will be using an input and inside of the type we need a number so i'm going to add the number then i will be going to use the id parameter means i want to specify the id not a parameter so here i will be typing principal so this one the smaller one and then we need to add the placeholder placeholder tag which is enter enter the principal amount so this marks the actually completion of our so if i go to the end you can see it is completed so this is what we have to do for the ft calculator the first element so if i just control save it and if we see it like the output you can see this is our first principal amount so we need to actually copy and paste it one more time so that it will save a little bit our time so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy it and i will be pasting it two more times and then i will be changing the content of it so if i just save it and you will see we have three both of them because we need three so let me just change the their label name and their ids so the first one is label the second is actually for the interest interest rate and then the label i'm going to change it into interest rate okay so this will be our interest rate and i also need to specify the class here so that we can actually style it when so it's going to be like form group because i actually forgot it to enter it so i'm going to also enter it for the second div so here we need to also and okay so i copy the wrong thing again i need to copy it and then i will be pasting it here one more time and then for this one also and then here we need to leave the input type as number because we are working with number and here we need to add the interest rate so i'm going to copy it and then we need to change the placeholder enter the interest rate interest rate so i'm going to remove the amount okay so this marks the second one and then we are need to change the third one this is for the tenure so it's kind of like tenure and then it's label text which will be displayed and then we need to specify the id so here we are going to specify the id like tenure you can see and then we need to change the label which is enter the tenure in years so and tenure i'm going to short it as the tenure in years so if i just save it and let me see it so you can see now we have three input elements inside our project now the last we need a button so if i just go to there and let me see this is a button and we need a another label to display the result so coming back to the visual studio code so you can see this is the container the main container then we have our h1 tag okay then we have form groups so we have three form groups of having a class form group so means we have three div inside of this we have label and input and then we need a button so it should remain inside the container the button all the things will be added inside the container because later on we need to create a card and then put all of this inside the card like just you can see it here okay so again coming back to visual studio code so here i will be using a button and inside of the button i'm going to specify the id and i will be using a calculate btn short for the button and then we are going to specify the class for the styling class is equal to and then here i will be using a calculate btn 
actually I have added a cal only calculate btn but at this time I need to specify the hyphen and make it as smaller one now here you will be seeing that we have used two selectors the first is used for the you know javascript purpose because we are going to use it to calculate the logic part and this one is used for the styling inside the css file okay so that is why i have specified here two id selector means the first is id selector and the second one is class selector then we need a paragraph element so if i just do it here and type it the id and then inside that i will be using a result again i am using here a id and then we need to specify the class so this class one is used for the javascript purpose and then i will be here using a maturity amount maturity amount okay so this marks the completion of the html part so if i see it and just save it and you can see we have this little button so we need to add a text inside this button so again i'm going to here and actually I forgot to add the so i will be here writing a calculate calculate save it and you can see we have all of this so our next step is to style this particular calculator by using the style sheet so coming back to visit studio code and now i'm going to open the style.css file so inside of that we need to provide a lot of style so i'm going to type it and then i will be explaining the code so first i need to actually select the body element and here i will be writing some code means typing the code so first we need a font family here so the font family we are going to use an arial arial and i will be using a sans serif okay so this is what and the background color we are going to add it here like a simple hashtag f2 f2 and f2 so this is a little bit of gray i will say it and then we need to provide the display flex okay and then i will be here using a justified content center okay and then i will be using a line item center and then i will be using here a height attribute which is like 100 vh okay so this will actually makes the our container at the center of the screen then i'm going to select the container so i'm actually going to copy the container so that i didn't make any typo while typing the code so this is our container and inside of the container i'm going to add the background color so background color i'm going to use like hashtag fff for the white okay and then i will be using a border radius so border radius is going to be 5 pixel and then we need to specify the padding so padding is going to be like from all sides is going to be 20 pixel and then i need to specify the box shadow so box shadow is like 0 pixel and then 0 pixel and then we need to specify the 2 pixel and i will be using a rgba function to specify the color so 198 from the red then we need a grain so which is like 193 so 193 and then in the next one we need to specify the 193 again and then the alpha value is going to like 0 0.1 so this will be the box shadow property and then i will be using a max width property so the max width is going to be like 400 pixel and then the width is going to be like 100 percent so here i will be using 100 percent so if i save it and you can see now we have our card at the center of the screen now the next step is actually we need to create the dot container hover class so i'm going to copy this one again and paste it here and here i will be adding a pseudo class element hover so all of the code will remain same so but i am going to remove these padding or also this max width and width property we just need a one property which is box shadow so that we can create this effect like when we hover it so there is a box shadow is actually increasing means the shadow of the box become little bit more darker okay so we need to do that so here we are just we need to change the value so this zero pixel will become five and also we need to make it 5 and then this one is going to be like 10 pixel and the like our hover effect this one will become 0 also this one becomes 0 and 0 so if i save it and if i again go back and check it then you can see the border is actually means the box shadow is actually changing 
so we have done with the container code of this style so coming back to the visual studio code it's time to actually code the h1 so which is having a head heading of like ft calculator so i'm directly using the element selector because right now we have only one h1 so inside the h1 first we need to specify the font size so font size is going to be 24 pixel and then we need to specify the text align property and we also need a text decoration property so there is, should be an underline and after that i'm going to add the margin bottom is from 20 pixel so if i save it and see you can see we have this ft calculator is now styled then we need to style the input elements or we can say that the we are going to directly style it by using the form group because we have added a form okay so we are going to style this so coming back to the style.css so here i will be writing a form hyphen group and then we need to first target the label okay so let me start this and i didn't need any typo like say label name is label yes okay everything is perfect so first i need to make it a like a group like display block so right now you can see they all are actually coming in the same line horizontal because these elements have not a block so block one actually take the whole row i will say it because if you know the basic of the html so we are going to change its display property so coming back to the visual studio code so first we need to make it as block okay and then the second property we need font weight so font weight is we are going to use the bold or you can use the bolder as well if you like it then i need to provide the margin bottom so margin bottom is going to be like 5 pixel and then we need to do a one more styling which is form group and inside of that we need to provide the margin bottom is 10 pixel okay so this will be the form group and then we need to add the form group input so let me just copy this one and remove the extra spacing this is a form group and then we need to use the input inside the form group all the inputs we are actually targeting and first we need to specify the width it's going to be like 95 percent and after that we need to specify the padding so padding from all the side is going to be like 10 pixel and then i'm going to be using a font size property so font size is going to be like 16 pixel and after that we need to use the border property so there should be a border from all the sides so one pixel and we are going to use a solid border this is a solid one and we need to provide the color so it is going to be like cc and then we need to specify the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel so this will be the input group means the form group of the input the input element from the form group so if i go back to the then you can see our application is taking uh, the style just like we want to do it okay so we have now this light gray border uh, when i click on it we get this default styling the active code next we need to add the code for the calculate button and then this result one so again coming back to the visual studio code so first time we'll be adding the code for the result so where is the result so this is a result okay so i'm just targeting the result and inside of that first we need to add the font size property and we are going to add the text align property so we are going to make it into center and then the margin top property which is going to be like 10 pixel okay so now the next part is to add the code for the button so our calculate button calculate and then we need to specify the hyphen btn i think i am adding the correct one so i'm just going to copy it so that i didn't make any spelling mistake otherwise it will not going to work and then we need to open this code bracket so i'm adding here a padding so padding is like 10 pixel after that we need to add 20 pixel so this notepad is like padding okay and then we need to add a background color so background color we need a nice bluish color so 79ff 
not at the rate we need a hashtag 2979ff so this will give us a blue color and then we need a color which is a font color property fff hashtag first thing to specify hash not hashtag and after that we need to specify border is going to be none okay and then the font weight we are going to increase the font weight to like bold and if i just use the bolder one just to make it a little bit different then border radius is going to be like 5 pixel and after that we need to specify the cursor property so the cursor property is going to be like pointer okay so this will be the default coding now again i'm going to copy it and paste it and i will be removing everything except the color property because we need to change it so i will be using here a 4 4 and then 8 capital a and ff no dd is like ff also the hash symbol so this is a, a new color little bit darker than the previous one so if i save it and let me see the output screen so you can see it's becoming changing the color is not changing okay we need to make it a little bit lighter i think so if i go back to the visual studio code and if i say it here we can change it like with this one also okay if i just hover over it so it's actually the default okay so what i did actually it's actually overriding the code because i didn't specify here uh, hover so i need to specify the hover first let me undo it the color that i have used previously and here we need to specify the hover okay save it and if i just go back you can see now the color is actually changing so this one is actually working on the url part and it is actually working on the live plugin so it's a different so almost same so now it's time for the javascript part first we need to get the id elements of this whole field also the button and then we need to calculate the logic and then need to display the result inside this result element which is a paragraph element so let's start with the javascript part so coming back to visual studio code so let first open our javascript file so first we need to create here a function so it's going to be a function which is calculate calculate maturity amount i name my function then we need to specify the basis and then its body so the thing is here we need to actually first get the input values so first here i will be writing and getting get the input values get the inputs input or i can say that the get the input values from the form elements okay and the first we need to do it here const and principal so instead of using get element directly first we need to use a function called parse float and inside of this we need to get the element so i am typing here document dot get element by id and inside of this we need to specify the bracket and a single quote and then i will be typing the name of the id element principal okay and then we need to get a value so here we need to type it uh, after the bracket dot value okay so this is what we need to do then i'm going to copy it because we need to get the element id of the two more so i need to change it here interest rate and here i will be also typing the interest okay so we get the second id and then the third one is tenure and document dot and here we need to specify the tenure as well so now we get the elements then we need to perform the calculation so here i will be again typing the code perform the calculation and instead we need to create the another const variable which is maturity maturity amount is equal to then the logic which is principal multiply with the principal amount inside of the bracket principal multiply with interest interest rate and then we need to multiply it with the tenure as well 
and then we need to divide this value by 100 so this is a logic for calculating the maturity amount and then we need to display the result so here i will be typing the comment display the result and instead of that again we need to use the document dot get element by id and here we need to specify the result which is our paragraph element which is a paragraph element and instead of that we need to update its inner text value inner text is equal to and then we are here using a template string so if i use it here like that text note this one template string so here i will be using a maturity maturity amount and then colon and then i will be using a dollar symbol then curly brackets this is a template string then here i need to type the maturity amount dot two fixed and inside of this we need to specify here two and then we need to actually terminate it so this is what so let me just zoom out a little bit okay so this is the final code of the result which it will display the result now if we run this application we didn't able to calculate it because we have fetched the ids of all the four elements but we have our five elements the button id is not fetched means we need to add the listener to this our button okay so after the end of this function we need to add the listener to our button outside of this function so attach the listener attach the event listener to the calculate button okay so let me add it so first we need to use the document dot get element by id so we have actually specified the button id which is calculate calculate btn i didn't make any typo let me first check it so calculate btn copy it and this i want to paste it then we need to add the event listener by adding dot add event listener so we are going to add event listener pressing a tab key and instead of that we need to specify the click event listener so here is a click and then we need to specify a comma and then calculate maturity amount which is the name of our function so we need to call this event okay and after that we need to specify a here a terminator so that's actually marks the completion of the code if we save it and then we need to run this application so if i coming back to the browser okay so i'm going to refresh it and then i will be adding here a uh, amount which is one lakh okay so we have five zeros the rate of interest is going to like 6.0 and then the tenure is actually like one year so if i click on calculate then you can see we get this whole big string so it's actually not working i think there is something problem so if i change the value again like 5 lakh you can see we have 5 0 6.0 0. if i just add here only 6 calculate it then we are actually multiplying it so it's actually not working there is something problem so we need to fix it so coming back to our visual studio code so let me see the javascript part because the designing part is done properly but we are actually facing the problem so actually here is a problem we need to actually add the value instead of multiplying so here we need to add the plus symbol okay so we need to add the principal with the multiplication so save it and if i again refresh it make sure you can see we are actually working on the url one which is the live server one this is actually working on the path one okay so let's again check it by entering the value so i am actually here entering the one lakh again so we have five, five zeros then the rate of interest is going to like 6.0 and then the tenure is going to like one so if i click on calculate then you can see now it's actually showing 6000 interest so if i change the value to like 7.0 then we get 7000 rupees of interest and for two years it's going to like 14000 and if i just increase it here a value like 5 lakh so you can see here is a 5 lakh and if i just do it then you can say we are actually earning 70,000 as an interest rate on two years okay so this is the final working code of our ft calculator so 
that's it for this lecture if you like this lecture then leave a review and if you face any difficulty then comment it down i will definitely try to help you so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the password generator application so let me show you the final application that we are going to build so this is the final application that we are going to build in this particular video so you can see this is a password generator part of the application so when we click on generate password so you can see we are getting the 8 length password so if i increase the length of the password and if i click it then we are seeing the 10 length password so if you don't want to include a lowercase letter click on then you can see we are getting the include uppercase n numbers so if you want a symbols and also the lowercase then you get the symbols again you can click on it then you get the difficult password if you increase it then you are getting the strong password by using symbols numbers uppercase and lowercase letters so this is the project that we are going to build in this part of the course so here you can see inside this visual studio code i have already created the three files the first is index.html the second is style.css and the third is app.js so i actually added all of this file inside this particular folder which is password generator for web so i'm going to click on this and now we can see everything more clearly so i'm going to click on this and drag it to the screen and also i want a browser and also i'm going to add the next tab so this one is actually for the project that we are going to develop so first we are going to start with the html part of this project so click on the index.html so here i'm going to tap the x sign of exclamation if i press the tab key then you can see we get the boilerplate code so i'm going to name this as password generator and if i save it and also i need to add here a h1 element just for the checking purpose whether the things are working or not okay so i'm going to click on this live server so first i'm going to click on this go live now you can see we are getting the results in our browser i'm going to click on the closing the tab now i'm going to just make it little bit this viewport so that we should do okay so it's actually changing okay so first we are going to add the other html elements for this password generator okay so i'm going to wrap this h1 inside the container which is div so here i will be typing a container okay and okay i have actually spelling it mistake so tab key and inside this container i'm going to place this h1 okay and also we need to link the css part so here i will be adding this css part and also the javascript part so i am adding a script tag and here i need to provide the src and instead of that i need to specify the file name of the javascript file okay so this is all what we have to do so far now inside of this we need to add the other elements which is an input type okay and this is noted this is will be working as a label we can't enter the text inside this so we need to restrict it and then we need a button then we need a password length input type and then we need these four check boxes so all of this we need to add it one by one okay so let do it so the first we need a div for the password so i'm going to type it here a class which is password so dot password pressing a tab key and instead of that we need to specify a one input type so input and the type is going to be text because it is actually a password so we need to consider it as a text so i'm going to provide the id and here i will be using a password and then we need to specify the password as read only so we are going to actually add the attribute as read only and then we need to add the button so when we click on the button we are getting the new password every time so we need to specify the type of this button as button okay and actually we need to close the tab why it's not closing okay i need to add it here and and the closing tag is also appearing 
and then we need to specify the id which is generate password you can name it whatever you want but actually for the follow up this course so just type it whatever i am typing just so that we both are on the same track and it's become very easy for you to actually troubleshoot the code when you make any mistake so type it exactly the same that i am typing in the video then we need to provide the label to our this input element which is generate password okay and if i just control save it then you can see we are getting our password generator input type and the generate now in this input you can see we not able to enter the value so if i remove this read only attribute then you can see if i save it and if i just then you can see we are able to enter the value so make sure you add this read only then you can see the values is actually removed so after adding the input code from the button and generate password it's time to coming outside of this tab and add the other input element which is the options like these are okay so again coming back to the our password generator and inside the visual studio we need to add another tab so i'm going to just use the options which is a matter and pressing the tab key now inside of this tab we need to specify all the other input type which is our checkboxes okay so that we can easily style it so first i'm going to add it here a label and this label is going to be for the length of the password just length and then to specify the label name which is password okay and then after that we need to provide the input to this label so input type is going to be a number whether you want a 8 bit character long password or a 10 character long password not bit you want a 10 character long password 5 character or a longer password like 16 so i am going to specify here a length okay after specifying the length then to specify a value so the default value is going to be like 8 because in most of the website we need a 8 bit long password means 8 character long password and the minimum value is also going to be 8 okay and then the maximum it can support up to 64 okay so actually i have forwarded here another code remove it and here we need to add a 64 actually i have not closed this one that is why it's giving the error and go zoom out little bit okay so now the input is i have done so if i just control save it then you can see we get the password length so we have here made a spelling mistake i think as password length so right now it's actually coming at the front of the password but we want to add the top so we are going to style it when we are doing the css part okay so rest uh, we need to add these four labels and then these four checkboxes so coming back to the our own password generator tab and here after we need to ins remain inside this div okay and then i'm going to add uh, another label label and this label is for lowercase okay and then we need to also specify the and also for the colon okay and then we need to specify the input type input and then the type is going to be checkbox because we need to add a checkbox okay and after that we need to specify the id to this checkbox is going to be like id is equal to like lowercase okay and then it is actually we need to provide the checked property so that when we click on it we are getting this checked and if we remove this checked property save it then there is no check okay so we need to manually do it so this is the label for the lowercase now i'm going to copy this two lines of code and paste it one more time and again paste it for two more times because she coming right next and yeah so this is for the lowercase if i save it then you can see we are getting this one two three four one and we need four so right now what i'm going to do i'm going to actually change the like a content of all of this so first the last one is actually i'm going to style it means modifying the last one first this is for the symbols 
okay this is a special characters so here i will be adding these symbols symbols and remove this lower case also i have removed the checked property so it is going to remain checked box and this is actually a symbols symbols and then the the second last one which is for the like our numbers okay so i'm going to here give an id as number and then the name is also I'm going to include numbers okay then the second one which is lowercase it is going to be like uppercase this is going to be uppercase and the id name is also going to be changed into uppercase okay if i save it you can see include lowercase which is a checkbox then include uppercase this is a checkbox for the include and include number then this will be the checkbox for this include numbers and then we have symbols so right now you can see all of them are actually coming one after the other in the same line this is because the we are going to modify its display property which is we are going to set the display property to block when we are actually styling it into the css part now here you can see i have actually made a uh, one mistake like uh, you can see the id for this symbol one is actually a lowercase so we need to change the id of this one to like symbols okay so the id is going to be like symbols also you can see the label for this is actually a lowercase but actually it is a number so here i will be typing numbers and also this is should be a smaller symbols and also for this this is for the lowercase this is for the uppercase so here also we need to specify the uppercase case so this is for the uppercase this is for the numbers and symbols so all of them are now perfectly typed if i control save it the output will remain same the last one is unchecked because sometimes you don't want to include a special symbols in your password like symbols or special symbols whatever you want okay you can change it as per your need so our next step is to actually style the css part of this password generator application so now we have to style this password generator application so first we have to open the style.css file so i'm going to select the body element and inside of this we need to specify the font family and background color so i'm going to be adding a background color first so it's going to like f5 f5 and f5 it's going to give us a like a white type of color and if i control save it you can see the little bit of the gray color i will say it now we need to specify the font family so font family is going to like arial and sans serif sans serif okay so this is the body font and you can see the font is actually changed if i remove this property save it you can see the default password and if i use arial sans serif now you can see the font is changed for the application then we need to specify the code for the container and we style the start the block of the container so the first thing is we need to specify the max width property it's going to be like 600 pixel if i save it you can see the some of the elements are actually coming into the next line because the maximum width is going to be 600 pixels okay actually i have to do it just place it like so that you can see everything more clearly okay and the next property we are going to add the margin so margin from top layer is going to a zero and for so if i just save it right now you can see there is nothing change and if i use auto and change then you can see it's actually now coming back at the center then we need to add the another property which is padding so padding is like from all side is going to be like 25 pixel okay and then i need to provide the border radius so i'm going to type the property because these are some basic ones you can easily remember it by just experimenting with these properties because these are some easy ones so now i'm going to use the box shadow so box shadow is like zero pixel and then again 0 pixel and then i need to provide the 20 pixel then i will be using a rgpf function 
for 0 from all the color and then alpha I'm going to provide this 0 0.2 if I save it then you can see we are getting this card like structure okay because we have added the box shadow and also the border radius and then I'm going to add here a background color so background color I will be using FFF which is for the white then you can see we are actually getting this nice looking card okay and now it's time to actually style the h1 element which is our password generator heading okay so we need to do that so first i will be aligning this to add this center so text align at center and then also we need to provide the margin top property so margin from top is going to be like so if you're not using the margin let me show you so it is at the center and then i will be using margin top is going to be like zero pixel or i can just do it like a two pixel okay so that is you can change it as per your need again i am saying it now the next we need to add the code for the label that we are actually seeing it here that is include and include upper cases these are the labels that we need to style it so first i will be using here a label and targeting the element directly by its name so here we are actually going to use the display property to like flex and then we need to align the items at center so if i save it then you can see everything is now coming one after the other okay so instead of using a block element i have used here a display flex and align items at center then i'm going to specify the margin property so margin is going to like 10 pixel and then i will be specifying here a zero then you can see margin from top is top and bottom is going to be like 10 pixels and from left and right it actually is zero so if i here increase the like two pixel and you can see they are actually coming very narrow so 10 pixel is actually working fine for me okay so next we are going to add the style for our password element that is this one so let me see in the password so this is the id which is the password so i'm going to copy it and providing the hashtag and use it and opening its block of the code and uh, first we need to add the margin top property so it's going to like margin top from 20 pixels if i save it then you can see there is a 20 pixel margin from the heading and this particular element and after that when you specify the font size property so the font size is going to be like 24 pixel which right now you cannot see it because we have actually added nothing inside it because we are going to update the value of this element by using javascript okay then we need to add the text align property it's going to be center and then we need to add the padding padding from all sides is going to be like 10 pixel and then we need to add the border to be none so border is going to be none so if i save it you can see there is no border and even the button is actually far from the because right now it's actually like padding and also its font size increased text alignment is center so it's look like little bit bigger than its previous position means previous form it's actually changed its form i will say it now the next is we need to add the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel okay if i save it and then we need to add the background color so that we can say it and here i will be using a f9 f9 and f9 color if i save it you can see there is a little bit of the appearance of the i could that particular input type i will say it and then we need to add the box shadow so the box shadow is going to be like 0 pixel then 0 pixel and then we need to specify the 10 pixel and then i will be using an rgba function and then 0 0 0 and the alpha is going to be like 0 0.2 save it then you can see there is a nice shadow of the box means there is a nice box shadow so that marks the completion for the code of the password element means the password element yes this is a password element and next we need to add the code for the generate which is our button so go to the button and copy the id again i will be using a hashtag then 
paste it and then start its block of code. Now inside the generator, first I need to add the again margin property, which is like margin from top is going to be like 20 pixel. Okay, then we need to add the background color is going to be like green color. So we are going to use 4 C A F and we need to add here 5 0, which is a green color. You can see that looks like a button, and then we need to add the color. So color is going to be like white. So you can see the white color. Then need to add the border or border radius. It's going to like border is equal to none. So the border is actually removed from the button, which is a default. By default, the button has the border. So we remove the border. Then we need to specify the border radius property. It's going to be like five pixel. And then I will be adding a padding. So it looks like a little bit bigger. So you can add the padding. Even you can add the padding to like twenty pixel if you want to make it big but that looks too big so 10 pixel is working fine even the 15 pixel is working 15 not 10 is working fine 10 pixel you can see it's look great and then we need to specify the font size so font size is going to be like 16 pixel so now it's actually a little bit bigger the font size and then we need to provide the cursor property which is cursor and it's going to be like pointer then again I'm going to copy it we need to provide a little hover state to it so colon and then we will be adding a hover closing its block of code and then here we need to change the background color property color is going to be a little bit lighter than the previous one so 3 e 8 e and then we have a 4 1 color save it so if I hover it and you can see it's actually become a little bit darker so it's indicating that we are actually going to click on the button okay so that's marks the completion for the code of the button as well and then i think all these styles have been done so if i save it and you can see this is the css part for the project i think everything is look great you can even check it if i refresh it you can see all of these three are checked the symbol once is unchecked so yeah it looks same guys we have done it the css part of the project so our next step is to add the javascript So now it's time to add the javascript part to this password generator application. So for that we need to use the javascript file. So I'm going to open the app.js file. Now instead of that first we need to actually fetch the ids of all of these ui elements. That is this input type button, this password length input type and all of these four check boxes. So Let's start doing it, but before that, because it is a password generator application, so we need to create four variables. The first variable is actually for the lowercase letters, the second is for the uppercase letter, the third is for the numbers, and the fourth one is for the symbols. So let me first create all of these variables. So first I'm going to type it here const and it's going to be like lowercase characters or i can say that the letters is equal to and it's is this is going to be of type string and then, then we need to add the const and this is going to be upper case letters is equals to and then again i need to add the semicolon and then inside of that again we need to create the variable which is of numbers is equal to this is also of type string so it's going to hold the string values and then we need to create the const variable again which is for the symbols is equal to and then this is also type string now instead of that we need to add the character from a b c so instead of typing manually i can just simply just pasting this particular code so that it will save the little bit of time you can see this is for the a b c and then for the uppercase character we also need all of the 26 alphabets then we need 10 digits which is for the numbers so again i'm going to paste it and then we also need special symbols because for creating the password with the use of special characters or special symbols you can say so these are the four variables we need and then we need to fetch the element ids so first we need to create here a const variable so it is of length so first i'm going to type it here length 
length e l which is length element is equal to and then we need to type it here document dot get element by id which is the name is going to be length so i'm going to provide it here and here we need to use the length which is the first one so first we get the id of this particular element which is length that is why i have written it here so control save it and then we need to again copy this one and too many times so i'm going to copy not this one actually i have didn't copy it one more time and again i'm going to change it here to lowercase el which is lowercase element and here i will be typing it here uh, lower case again i'm going to press enter to come to the next line and again i'm going to press ctrl v pasting the code because i already copied into the clipboard and here i will be typing it here uppercase el which is for the uppercase element and then here i want to type it here uppercase again coming back to the next line here i will be using control cv again the number or i can say the numbers el because it has more than a one number and here i will be using numbers after that i again coming back and here i will be pressing ctrl cv and here i will be using symbols el which is symbols element and then i will be using here a uh, symbols and after that again i will be pressing ctrl v this time it is going to be a generate button generate btn short for the button and then the id which is generate so i can just cross check whether the id is generate so you can see the id is generate then the last one is password so i actually copy that now copy don't copy because i need to type this whole big line of code so for the saving of the time i'm actually copy pasting it so password password el which is for the password element it is short and then here we need to type it password password so we are actually fetching the element ids even you can comment it down i already showed you in the first project which is a basic project that i have developed in this course so after that we need to actually set the listener to our button so that when we click on it we should be able to generate the password so let's start doing it so first here we'll be adding a generate btn dot add event listener so the event listener that we are going to add is actually a click so i will be typing here uh, inside the double quotes click event not x click it's like click event and then we need to specify the comma then function and then we need to start the braces of the function and then the brackets okay and also we need to provide the terminator to this particular generate add event listener okay so everything we need to type inside this block of event listener code okay so first we need to create here a one variable of the const type which is of length so first then we need to type it here a length el dot value so we are getting the value of that particular constant okay notice it's like terminator and after that we need to create a variable of type let so it's going to be an empty variable right now characters is equal to and it is of type empty string and then again we need a, another character which is for the password that is equal to password this is also type string but it is going to be an empty one at this point of time okay then we need to check for the condition so for checking the condition we need to use the if condition so first we need to check for the lowercase el so first we need to check the value whether it is checked or not so here we need to use the lowercase or ed checked because it is actually a value so checked and then here we need to type the character characters which is a variable so we are going to use here a short form things that are characters and then i will be using here a lowercase character so whatever if it is checked we are actually adding the characters inside this lowercase means we are actually getting the lowercase 
if it is checked means if it is lower case where is lower case this is the lower case if it is checked then we are actually setting the character variables to lower characters lower case character we are assigning all the lower case characters to this character variable okay and then again we need another if condition so we are actually using a multiple if condition so here we will be using an uppercase so again what i need to do is actually the things little bit same i'm just going to paste it and i will be replacing with the uppercase letters if it is checked then characters then we are going to assign it with the uppercase letters and also provide the terminator okay characters and now it's time to again check for the condition for the like number so again copy it and paste it one more time this fine for the number element which is a if it is checked then we are going to assign the numbers all numbers to the characters variable okay so if symbol is checked okay and then we need to again okay and it will be pasting because it will save a lot of time so it will be symbols el if it is checked then we are going to assign the character variables to all the symbols so this for the condition of the if for the checking the whether checkbox is checked or not if it is checked then we are going to assign the corresponding value to that particular characters okay so i hope this is actually clear to you guys okay so the length now it's time to actually use it for the logic so i'm going to here use a for loop so inside the for loop i'm going to run a means initialize a counter by using the let variable which is a i is equal to zero and then we need to specify the condition so it's going to be the length of the means this particular length which is the password length that is actually set it so according to the length we are going to run the loop so it's going to be like length okay smaller than length and then we need to increment the counter by using the post increment operator okay and then we need to open the block of the for loop and inside of that we need to specify the password variable that we have created not password el this is the password variable okay and now here we can just simply use password so it's actually password it's actually a spelling mistake i way okay so now it's actually changed okay and now it's equal to so again we are actually using a short syntax property plus and equal to then i need to use the characters which is a characters dot care at function this is a care at function and instead of that we need to add the logic which is math dot floor and inside of that again i need to randomize it by using math dot random random and then we need to add here a asterisk sign for the multiplication then characters dot length whatever the length we are going to multiply it okay at the end we need to specify the terminator if i just zoom in out we zoom out a little bit and you will see the things more clearly okay you can see the code more clearly i actually zoom out a little bit more and after that we need to set the value to the password element so i'm going to type it here password el dot value is equal to password so if i control save it then you can see everything is like we have completed the logic part of the course so let me check whether it's working or not so now coming back to our browser if i click on generate password actually nothing is working i okay so if i refresh it and actually it is not working so what is going to be the problem let me check it first so actually i forgot here a semicolon so if i specify the semicolon control save it and if i click on generate password it's still not generating the password i click on these symbols and the problem i think we are facing some issues so we are actually fetching the correct ids length lowercase uppercase numbers symbols generate so actually there is a problem we are actually fetching the wrong id i think we check it here input type text is password so this is actually double s 
and I have used here a single S. So that is a typo. So if I specify here a password, if I control save it, and if I click it, now you can see it's actually working. So our password is actually working. If I increase the length of the password, then you can see we are getting a long password. If I include symbols, then we are getting a very strong password of 18 character. So that's it for this lecture. We have successfully developed our password generator application. If you face any problem, then you can comment down. I will definitely try to help you. So thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. So welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we're going to start creating the vowel checker application. So let me show you the final application that we are going to build in this particular lecture. So you can see this is our vowel checker application. It has a nice hover effect. So when we hover it, then you can see the background shadow means the box shadow of this particular container is actually become little bit more darker. So here we have a text area, then we have a heading and then the button and then we have a paragraph element in which we are going to display the results. So if I type here a uh, hello every one and if I click on count vowels, then you can see we have total six vowels or you can see it as check vowels, count vowel or you can name it as vowel counter, whatever you want. It, the main motive of this application is to check how many vowels exist in the given string so it is becoming a string so if we enter like more content here again hello what is new going on okay so if i click on count vowels then you can see again it's going to count the 14 vowels so if i check one two then three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, and 14. So we have 14 vowels. Okay, so we are going to build this application. So first we are going to start with the HTML part of this particular project. So you can see I have already created three files inside this Visual Studio code. The first is index.html, the second is style.css, and the third one is script.js. So the first Coming back to the index.html, I'm going to add the boilerplate code by using the emit abbreviation by pressing the sign of exclamation. So if I press tab key, it will give us the boilerplate code. So this is our three meta tags that are used just for the compatibility purpose and for the responsiveness and for the UTF character set, which is Unicode character set. So first I'm going to change the title of the project. So it's going to be like vowel checker. Or you can say it as a vowel counter if you want, but I will just name it as checker because we are actually checking the number of counts. Okay. Checker and slash counter because it is actually also counting the number of vowels. You can name it whatever you want. Vowel counter, vowel checker is totally up to you. Now the thing that we need is actually a container and the four elements that will be present inside the container. Because this is a one which is, is actually going to be div, then we need a heading tag, then text area and the button and then we need a paragraph element. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open the new tab or make this particular into smaller one. And also I'm going to drag it so that we can see both the output and the coding part simultaneously if I make changes in the coding part. And after that, I will first here using a div element. Inside of the div, I'm going to specify the class, which is going to be container. Container and then inside of that, I will be using an h1 element. And this h1 element is going to be the ID of the, means the heading of the application, which is vowel checker. Okay, so if I control save it and with the use of go live plugin, or I can say that the extension go live. So if you click on it, then we will see the output of the project. So you can see we have our vowel checker. So it means that everything is working perfectly. Next, I'm going to link the CSS file. So here I'll be typing style.css. So all of these files are actually present in the same directory, which is vowel checker web. Okay, so that is why it's actually style.css. This is the basic stuff. Then I'm going to add the script tag. And for that here, I will be using the src element. And inside of that, I will be named my script, means going to link my script.js file. 
and then I will be adding here a text area because things are will be type inside this text area so we need a text area so number of polls rows so I'm going to remove all of this particular one the only thing is need I ID so I'm going to remove this and I will be specifying the ID as input text so this is going to be the input text and then next I need a placeholder attribute so inside of that we will be typing enter your text okay and then after that we need to add a button so I'm going to click on end and then here we will be adding our button so if I zoom a little bit so that you can see the text area completely so here I'll be using a button and then inside of the button we are going to specify the on click event so inside of that we will be calling check vowel our check vowels function that we're going to call on the click of the button and inside of that we will be adding our count vowels or you can say that the check vowels to make it a little bit different than the final one all right and then i will be adding here a paragraph element and inside of that i will be specifying the id is equal to result result and then it will be having a result so i think all of the html elements is completed we have need four elements which is the heading the text area and then we need check vowels button and the result for displaying the result which is a paragraph element so all the html part is done so our next step is to add the css part so now it's time to add the css part to our vowel checker application so for that we need to use the style.css file so here inside the style.css file first i'm going to add the body element means targeting the body element inside of that i will be specifying the font family so the font family is going to be like arial and then we will be using a sans serif okay so this will be the font and the next property that we want to use is actually a display so the display is going to be like flex and then i will be using here a justify content is going to be center and uh, align items is going to be center as well and then we will be using a height attribute inside of the height i am going to add the 100 vh and after that i will be adding here a background color property which is going to be like an rgb function and inside of the rgb i will be specifying the color code which is 204 for the g and then for the b i am going to use the 204 so if i control save it then you can see inside the background you will see the difference of the power checker so right now it's actually the color is not changed because i have made here a typo because we need an rgb so if i use it and then control save it then you can see the nice color provided with this particular code then we need to target the container so for targeting the container we need to use the container class container class and inside of that First, I will be using the background color property. Again, I will be using a RGBA at this point of time. RGBA function. So for R, I'm going to use a 255, 255, and then for the alpha value, I'm going to use a 0 0.2. Control save it. Then you can see there is a difference between these two colors to actually differentiate that it is a container and the rest one is the body background. Then we need to add the backdrop filter. So for that, I will be using here a blur property okay so this blur is going to be of 10 pixel so 10 pixel blur so it makes a little bit difference you can increase the size of the blurness by increasing the pixel now next we are going to use the box shadow property to create the nice box shadow okay as the property convey or actually explain its meaning so i will be using here a rgba function again actually i am typing this function two times wrong and then here we'll be using 0 0 0 and for the alpha value is going to be like 0 0.2 if i control save it so right now you can see a very small box shadow because we are going to change it in the hover section of the code okay and then after that here i will be using the border radius property so the border radius is going to be like a 10 pixel 
from all the sides and then I will be adding a padding so padding is going to be like 20 pixel if I control save it then you can see our application is actually getting a little bit styling and after that I will be adding here a display property display property is going to be like flex control save it then you can see all of these are actually appearing at the one row okay so now we have to change it so flex direction is going to be like column at this point of time and then I will be using here uh, another property which is align items so if first I will be showing the output of this flex direction property so all of them now actually coming at the columns point of view means one after the other okay and then I will be adding align items property which is going to be the center so all of them are now perfectly aligned at center now there is a one problem I have noticed inside this box shadow property right now you can see the container doesn't get the box shadow just like this one has so a default box shadow if it doesn't hover over it so the problem is that I have actually specified here a commas so there is no comma inside this box shadow property so now you can see the box shadow okay so the, our next step is actually we need to change this particular size of this but our text view means the text area not text view so first we need to add the container which is used for the hover so i'm going to add here a hover class element which is just pseudo element and then i'm going to copy this box shadow property because i have specified the commas that is why the shadow is not appearing i have made a small mistake while typing the code of the css and then i'm going to actually darker the box shadow and also the alpha is going to be like 0 0.3 so when we hover away then it's become little bit more darker so our next step is to actually style this text area so just making some room so here i will be using the text area or i can just simply go first and style the h1 element first because it has uh, just three lines of code so h1 and instead of that first i will be adding the color so color is actually a black so i'm going to just leave the color it is just going to be the little bit of darker so instead i will be using the font size property so the font size i will be adding here a 36 pixel and then i will be using the margin bottom property which is going to be 20 pixel okay so this will be the mode h1 element for the heading of the vowel checker application and then we need the text area so text area and for that i will be adding here a width property so width is going to be like 500 pixel and then i will be specifying the height is going to be like 350 pixel okay and then i will be adding here a margin property so margin is going to be like 10 pixel and then i will be adding here a auto okay and then after that we need to add here a display property so display is going to be like block and then i will be here using the font size property font size is going to be 24 pixel and then i will be using here a padding so the padding is going to be 10 pixel okay and then i will be adding here a border border property not border radius after border we are going to use the border radius also so border is going to be that solid and then there's a hashtag ddd just only six so you can see there is a border is actually coming and after that we need to add the border radius so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel so there should be a rounded corners and then the last which is the most important property which is the resize so resize property is going to be none so now we cannot resize our vowel checker okay so if we just go it here and we can't actually resize it so if i refresh you can see it is look like this and it's like this so our working fine means this is the one we are actually using the live server plugin this is actually working on the path one okay so our next step is to actually style this button and then also this result element which is a paragraph element so start the coding for the button so i'm going to target the button here button so the first thing is i'm going to provide the padding so padding from all side is going to like 10 pixel save it so it's become a little bit big i think okay so i'm going to specify the padding is like 10 pixel and 20 pixel not from all side 
this looks good and then after that i will be adding here a background color so background color is going to like 4c a f 5 0 this is the background color we are going to use actually there is should be a 4 not f because we want a green color button and then i will be adding here a color which will change the color for the font okay so it's now having a white color then there is a border so right now that there is a default border so we are going to remove the border by using the border line property and then i will be using a font size property font size so the font size is going to be 16 pixel and after that i will be using here a text transform property to actually transform the text to uppercase so all the now letters will become means character become in uppercase okay and after that i will be using here a font weight property so font weight is going to be like bold okay and after that i will be using here a border radius property so border radius is going to be 5 pixel and then we need to change the cursor property which is going to be pointer and after that there is should be a nice transition inside the button so it's going to like background color transition background background hyphen color and i will be using here a 0.3 s and is okay so this is a property we are going to use so if we hover over it so now there is no hover effect is going on because we didn't specify the hover part of the button so what i need to do here i need to do button and we need to specify the hover element and inside of that we need to use the background color property it's going to be the background and now we are going to change the color so we need to get a more darker one a0 and then we need to specify a 49 control save it then you can see now this is having button so button also having a transition with the hover effect so our last element is actually left is a result element which we need to style so here i will be using the result element and instead of that first we need to specify the font size property so it's going to like 20 pixel and then we need to specify the margin top property which is going to be 20 pixel as well and after that we need to add the color property which is going to be like 000 and also we need to specify the hash character and then the rest is font weight which is going to be like bold control save it then we can see our result is also looking nice okay so that marks the completion for the code of the css part it's look almost same so in the next part we are going to add the javascript part for this Google checker application so now it's time to add the javascript part to this Google checker application so for that we need to use the script.js file so i'm going to use my script.js file so inside of that first we need to create the function because as you can see inside of this button we are calling the check vowels function so we need to create this function so i'm going to copy the name of this function and coming back to my script.js file so instead of that i will be calling using the function keyword then i will paste in the name of my function and inside of that first we need to get the value of this text area so for that we need to use the where variable so where text is going to equal to document dot get element by id so the id name of this is actually input text and we want the value so dot value after that we need to specify the terminator so the value of this text area will be saved inside this text variable also before coding inside this function we need to create a one more function and that will have an array of the vowels so for that i'm going here using a function keyword so is vowel i'm going to name my function as because it is a user defined function not a predefined function and inside of that it's going to accept a one parameter which is of care that doesn't have any default value so it's going to accept a parameter character of, of type character then i'm using the where keyword to create the vowels so this is actually going to be an array of the vowels 
so we need to actually store the character so here i will be using the a the first vowel then our e then we have i and then we have o make sure it is inside the double quotes or maybe single quotes a e i o u and then we need to return this value return vowels dot includes includes and instead of that we need to use the care that we have passed as an argument to this function so that's mark the completion of the code for this is vowel function now coming back to the check vowel function okay so here we need to create a one more variable of vowel count because at the end we want to count the number of vowels or you can say that the check and count of the vowels so vowel count is equal to we need to here specify the default value which is a zero so i have initialized the vowel count variable to a zero value and after that we need to convert the convert the convert it into lowercase i'm just going to convert it into lowercase okay so what i mean the whatever text is actually coming if we type it like this because right now if i use e and capital e so we want to count it means we need to actually convert it into smaller one because our array has an elements in smaller one we or i can say that the small case because all the five vowels are in small case so that's why we need to convert it into small case okay so text is equal to text dot lower case means to lower case so this function will actually convert the string into lower case and after that we need to here use the for loop so why i'm actually using the loop because at the end whatever we will write here is treated as a string and string is actually traversable so we can loop through the elements of the string and we can perform certain operations that we want so we want to actually check whether the string has vowels or not so if we find the vowel we are going to check it compare it and then if it is some match then we are actually going to increase the vowel count variable value okay so first i am going to here initialize the counter to zero because the indexing is actually started from the zero and then we need to run the loop according to the length of the string that will be entered inside this text area and that value will be saved inside this text variable okay so i'm going to here write text dot length so i want to the length of the string we are going to run the loop and then after that we need to increment the counter the basic syntax of the for loop okay and instead of that we need to create another variable which is a char variable that will be passed as a parameter to this is vowel function when we are calling inside the loop okay so that is why this local variable is actually created inside the for loop and after that we need to create here a text dot char at function so this char at function does what it actually returns the value whatever index we have specified here so if we specified here three so it's going to like if i just write it here hello so it's going to return the l as an element because right now this is zero one two and three so if it is here if we specify here three so it's going to return the l as a output to this character function means it will going to return the l as an output so you just simply google it more about this particular function because if we try to explain more in detail then this video will become more longer one so here i will be specifying the counter which is a i variable and after that we need to check for the condition so if we are going to use the function which is is vowel so if is vowel so also i need to specify the character so we are going to pass in the parameters suppose the first value of the index is zero so it's going to first actually make this into the smaller case right now i'm just going to give you the basic idea it's going to make the hello to into smaller case with this line of code and after that what it's going to do first is going to pick the h character and pass it to the is vowel function because right now the value of i is zero so whatever here first the zero value is actually zero 
So in the zeroth index we have h. So first the h will be passed to this particular function which is actually not a match because h is not a vowel. In the next run it's going to pass the e to this particular is vowel function. So if it is a vowel then it's going to return it and then we need to actually increment the vowel count variable by using the post increment operator and after that we need to set the value to our ui element which is a result element but after the end of the loop okay so for that we need to again create a, another variable which is of type result not type of result which is actually a result variable that will get the element so get element means first we need to use the document because the main object of the DOM is actually document so document document dot get element by id so inside of that we need to specify the id which is result and then we need to specify the terminator and after that we need to use the result variable and we are going to update its text content is equal to we need to actually append it with the total vowels colon and then i will be concatenating with the plus sign and then i need to specify the value of the vowel count so it's going to update the value of the result element which is our result paragraph element hour so if i control save it and here if i just type here hello and if i just click on check vowels then you can see we get the two as an output because right now e and o are the two vowels exist in this particular string if i add here this is a good project to learn js okay so if i just click it so we have now nine vowels so let me check it one by one so this is first one second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eight and nine and the rest of them are not a part of the vowels so that's it for this lecture if you like this lecture then please leave a review because this will definitely help me to grow my course and also helps me to improve my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the age calculator application so let me first show you the final project that we are going to build in this particular lecture so here you can see that this is our age calculator application so first we have a label or you can say that the heading then we have this select your data part and then we have this calendar item which is a date picker or then we have this particular button which will basically calculate the age if you click on it then you can see right now it actually showing the your age is nan which is not a number so first we are going to select the date of birth so from there i am actually going to select the year first so my year of birth is actually this one and october and then after that we are going to select it and then i will be click on this calculate age button so this is the age my age is actually 27 years okay so this is the project we are going to build in this video so first i'm going to minimize it and then i have already created the three files inside my visual studio so you can see here inside this particular project so actually it is a fourth project not a fifth one okay so inside of this project i have created these three files the first is a index.html in which i have added the boilerplate code which is like uh, for the HTML purpose, you can see that and just minimize it a little bit, means zoom out. So I have also linked my CSS file and also the JavaScript file. You can see these files are empty because we are going to build this project from scratch. So the first thing is we need to add the container for this particular effect, which is a that has this box shadow property. And after that, we are going to place all these four elements, okay, which is an input type date. So first, I am going to create the div. So here I will be writing the age, age calculator, and then I am going to press the tab key. So this will actually gives me the div of the class age calculator. Inside of that, I am going to place the my h2 heading, which is basically for the age calculator. Okay, 
if I save it and if I just go with this live server plugin, so if I run it, then you will see the output of my project. And it's actually started, so you can see age calculator, so everything is working fine. Now I can further proceed with the other elements. So the next element we want is actually an another div. So I'm going to write it here div. Instead of this div, I will be using a label tag. So this is a label and for just removing the other properties because those are not required. So here I will be using this select your date of birth. So I'm simply going to use the DOB just for the date of birth. And then here I will be using the input element import and then here I will be using the type as date and then also I am going to use the id because later on we are going to fetch this id inside the javascript file then I will be giving the id as dob ok so after adding these two elements next is we need a button so for adding a button I can use another date I am just making it a little bit uh, nesting it because then I will be using a css just I am using a different approach in previous project, I use a single container to actually stylize it, but I am going to show the different way you can use tags so that you can style the CS according to the use of the different containers. You can place multiple containers inside the container because we can do the nesting of the tags. Just a simple HTML stuff. Okay, so instead of this tab, I will be using a button. So this button is going to have an ID of like a button calculate or I can say that the calculate button calculate and then we specify the calculate btn which is short for the calculate button and then I will be providing the text calculate age not button and after that we also need uh, another element which is used for the display of the result so for that we are going to use the another div element here so I will be using here a div in previous project, I have used the paragraph element, but right now I will be using the div to showcase the result. So here I will be using the result. I have specified the id as result and I also am going to specify the result of age. So if I control save it, then you will see all the elements is now appearing in the screen, means the output browser. So our next step is to actually style the CSS part of this project. So now it's time to start with the CSS part of the project. So for that we need to open our style.css file. So here you can see I have opened my style.css file. So inside of that first I'm going to stylize the body element which is a main element of the HTML document. And inside of that I will be using the flex property change the display. So display is going to be like flex and for like we are going to use the justify content center. So if I do that, then you can see our age calculator is actually moves to the center of the screen. And then I will be using the in items property to the center as well. And you can see it's actually not moved. So we are going to remove this property. And inside of that, I will be using the height property of going to like 50 VH. So if I save it, also I need a align property as well, guys. Align in terms center. So you can see now our age calculator is actually appearing at the center of the screen. Not actually perfectly at the center of the screen. It is going to be the 50% of the view height. Okay, so the next property I'm going to use is the background color. So for that, I will be using the RGB function, not an A, it's just simply RGB function. And for the red color, I'm going to specify the value as 188. And for the green is going to be 158 and for the blue is going to be 221. If I control save it, then you can see the nice purplish color or you can say that the light purple color. So the next property that I will be using is the age calculator means we are going to stylize the age calculator. So I'm going to copy this class name which is a age calculator and I'm going to paste it here and then I'm going to start the body of the age calculator. So instead of that, first I'm going to specify the width. So the width is going to be like 800 pixel. And margin is going to be like 0. And I'm going to specify the auto. Okay, and the next property is going to be like text alignment property, which is going to be center of the screen. So if I save it, then you can see there is a, some changes in the output of the 
project inside the browser. Next, I'm going to use the font family. So font family is going to be like Arial. So I'm going to use this font. So you can see now the font is actually changed. The next is actually we need to specify the background color. So for the color, I will be using the RGBF function. So I specified all the three values as 255. Then for the alpha, I'm going to specify 0.2. Okay. Then for the backdrop filter. So backdrop filter is going to be like uh, backdrop filter is going to be like blur one. We are going to use the blur. And inside of this blur, I'm using the 10 pixel blur. So if I save it, then you can see there is a nice. So if I increase the amount of the blur like uh, 50, then you can see this become more brighter. So I'm going to leave it with the 10. Okay. And the next property, we need to specify the box shadow. So the box shadow is going to be like zero pixel. So I'm not going to make it a mistake here because in the previous project, I made a mistake inside the box pixel which as a result, the box shadow is not displaying in the output of the screen. So I'm going to use the RGBA function again. Then all the values I'm going to specify as zero and the alpha amount is going to be 0 0.2. So you can see there is a border is actually appearing, means the box shadow is actually appearing, not the border. Then we need to specify the border radius to actually round the edges of this box at the corners. So it's going to be like 10 pixel. So you can see now we have rounded corners and after that I'm going to specify the padding. So padding is going to be 20 pixel. So you can see now it's having a little bit more spaces. You can increase the padding to like 30 pixel as well. So if you want. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it with 20 because you can change the property as per your needs. The next property I'm going to specify is the display property. So display is going to be like flex. Okay, so if I do that, then you can see everything is actually appearing at the one row. And after that, I will be using the flex direction property. So flex direction is going to be like column. So if I use the column, now they are appearing one after the other. And then I will be using the align items property. Align items and it's going to be like a center. So once I do that, then every item will be appear at the center of the screen. Okay, so that's the styling for the age calculator element, which is our container. The next is we need to specify the code for the H2 element because there is only one H2 element inside our HTML project. So we are going to use font size is going to be like 34 pixels. And then we need to specify the margin property. So margin from top is going to be like 20 pixel. Okay, and then the next property we need to specify is the label one. So I'm going to select the label, the so tab key to auto complete the suggestion. Then I will be using the display as block. So if I do that, then you can see the input type data is actually appearing in the next line because of this block. Now it's actually appearing the whole row acting as a whole single container as inside the block level. Okay. The next property I will be using is the margin bottom property. So margin bottom property is going to be like 10 pixel and font size is going to be like 24 pixel. Okay. So it will increase the size of the select your DOB. The next uh, element that we are going to style is input. So its type is going to be like input type and is equal to be like date. Okay, so whatever the input type, we are here using the attribute selector. So input type, you can see this is the input type. So if it's having a date, so we are targeting this one. Okay. And inside of that, first I need to specify the padding. So padding is going to be like 8 pixel. If I save it, then you can see the size is actually increased. Means the padding is increased. And then there is a font size property. So the font size is going to be like 16 pixel. I'm using and then I will be specifying the border radius property. So border radius is going to be 5 pixel. I will specify the border radius property to 5 pixel. And then we need a border. So there should be a nice border of 1 pixel. Solid border. I need a solid border. And it's having a color of CCC. 3 times C. If I save it, then you can see there is a light border. 
of one pixel solid and after that we need to specify the width so the width is going to be like 400 pixel because the container width is actually 800 pixel so that is why i have specified the width to 400 pixel then i need to specify the margin bottom property so margin bottom property is going to be like 20 pixel because right now they are actually there is very less spacing between these two means the margin so if i did that then you can see it's actually appearing nicely at the center of this particular container so that marks the completion for the code of the input type date the next property we need to stylize is actually the button so let's do it so i will be selecting the button and also i'm copying this button because we want a hover state as well a pseudo class element so i will be using here a hover and inside of the hover first i will be using the background color because it is very it will be only a single line of code so if i using the color here 0 d 8 and it's going to be like b 0 so this is the cover used for the hover case and then we need to stylize the default state of the button so first i will be using the padding so instead of using the padding from both sides means all over the side i will be using the 8 pixel so this will give the padding from top and bottom and also from the other side so I, from the left and right i want 16 pixel padding okay so this will actually increase makes the button in a rectangular form then i need the font size property so font size i will specify the 16 pixel then border radius property so the border radius is going to be 5 pixel and then we need to specify the border so right now there is a border in the button so if i remove the border here we need to specify the none now you can see the button border is removed then we need to specify the text color so background color is going to be like hashtag 2196f3 so this will be the background color for the button and then the color for our text is going to be like white so you can see when i hover over it then it's become a little darker okay and then the cursor property we need to specify as pointer and then we need to specify there is a nice transition between the hover effect so it's going to be like background transition background color okay because we want to apply the transition on the background color so it's going to be like 0 0.3 s which is ease and if i do that then you can see there is a nice effect and after that our last element which is the result so we are going to specify the style with by including the id selector so margin so margin top is going to be like 20 pixel because right now they are actually very close with each other so if i do that then you can see it's actually become 25 percent margin means 20 pixel margin then we need to specify the 18 pixel font size which will increase the size of the font okay so that is the end of this css part of this project so it is almost the same just only there is a difference in between the label text okay so our next step is to actually provide the javascript code so let's get started with the javascript part of the project so for that we need to open our script.js file inside of that first we are going to fetch the id of all of these three input elements because for this one we have to select the id means the date of birth then this will be actually used to calculate the age when we click on it and inside of this result of age which is a div tag in this we will be display the final output of the calculated date of birth so for that we need to fetch the id of all of these three elements so the first element is our input type whose id is actually dob so i'm going to copy this id and coming back to my script.js file so inside of that first i'm going to create the const means a const to create the constant and dob input is going to be name of my variable dob input and then we need to use here a element dot get element by id selector and inside of the brackets we need to specify the id name which is dob and then similarly we need to fetch the elements of the other two means the id of the other two elements not elements means the id of the elements we need to fetch it so i'm going to copy this line of code and then i'm going to paste it in two more times so right now the javascript means visual studio code is giving us the error because the variable names are same because the javascript programming language is case sensitive so i'm going to here use the calculate 
btn which is short for the calculate button and here i am going to copy the id of this calculate button pasting the id of the calculate button now we have successfully fetched the id of the button so our next step is to fetch the id of the result element so coming back to the html part so here from that i will be copying the result and specify in place of the dob and also i am going to change it into result div or i can say that the result is but i am going to just simply leave it as a div so after that we need to apply the listener to this button so when we click on it we want to trigger the logic to calculate the age of the entered date of birth so for that i will be using here a calculate button add event listener now inside of this event listener i will be adding the code so first i'm going to specify the terminator and after that inside of it i will be specifying the event which is click event so on click of that we want to display the result and then i will be using here a function then the body of the function okay and inside of that we will be writing our logic so the first is we need to actually get the dob so first i will be specifying here some local variables so the const not this actually a const one is actually dob is equal to and then here i will be using a new date function allocating the memory to this object by using the date class so first i will be using here the input i will be specify this date as a dob input dot value okay and after doing that we need to specify the another variable which is a const age in minutes which is short for the age minutes so inside of that i will be using the date object which is a date one dot and here i will be using a function now inside of this now i am going to minus the dob dot get time so we are going to use the current time element note it's going to be a dob get time function so it will actually give us the age in minutes and after that we will be calculating the age date so we need to specify here another value age date is equal to new date again i am using allocating the value to the age date variable by using the new date class and inside of that i will be passing the age in minutes then i am going to specify the terminator and then we our final age is going to store inside this age variable so this is going to be give us the absolute value inside of this absolute function we are going to specify the code which is age date dot get u so we are going to use the utc format utc full year so this will function will be used minus with the 1970 okay so this is a logic that i have used 1970 so after that we need to set the value of this age variable to our result div which is actually this particular division so to do that i need to use here result so i have actually made a type of result it's actually a result so it is going to the result pb dot we need to update its inner html is equal to so here i will be using the template strings instead of that i will be using here a message which is your age is and then i will be using here uh, the curly brackets and a uh, dollar sign and then i will be using the age uh, variable means pass the variable age and then it's going to be years so finally the code is completed if i control save it and if i click on it this particular age input type and here i will be specifying the age so let me first switch check my birth year which is this birth year means selecting my birth year and also the month and then the date so if i click on calculate so you can see it's actually displaying your age is 27 years if i select the different one click on it and if i select the different month like say this 1998 july If I calculate it, then your age is 24 years. So our project is perfectly working. So that's it for this particular project, guys. If you like this course, then please leave a review because it will definitely helps me to grow my course. Also, it will gives me some suggestions to actually improve my future courses. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next lecture.
all right everyone welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build tip calculator so let me show you the final application that we are going to build in this whole lecture so this is the final product that we are going to build so you can see it has a nice modern looking design that has two like input types for the bill amount and the next one is for the tip percentage then we have this nice hover effect on this button and this is the heading of our calculator which is tip calculator then we have two different labels one for the tip amount and one for the total amount so if i refresh it then you can see right now this will be the basic structure of the application so if i click on this button if these two are empty then it's going to display the nan which is a nota number so right now i'm going to enter the amount which is 100 dollar or i can just simply go and type the percentage of the tip which is five percent so if i click on it then you can see tip amount is going to be the five dollar so this will be the total amount that we need to pay inside the restaurant or maybe a coffee shop if you are enjoying your food then you can use your this particular application okay so for building this application we are going to start with the html part first so here you can see i have opened my visual studio code so this is a previous project that we have built which is an age calculator so i'm going to close all of these files because I have to provide this as a source code to this particular part of the course. So first I'm going to click on the right click and then I'm going to create a, another folder and here inside of that I'm going to name this as project 5 which is for the like tip calculator and it is for the web because it's a web project because I also have some android projects is going on that is why for differentiating it I actually proceeded with the web character means the web word okay and then inside of that we need to create the three files the first thing is going to be the html not htn it's going to be like html i made a typo here which is html then we need another file which is the style.css and then the third file which is script.js file after that inside the html file means the index.html file i'm going to specify the base code also i'm going to minimize it means actually I'm going to change the viewport a little bit and clicking on the browser so this will be the output screen i will be using for the development so that you can see the output when i actually code the html element alongside the css part so first we are going to start with the html part so first open your index.html so here i will be using the shortcut emit abbreviation which is a sign of exclamation and if i press the enter key then we get the boilerplate code so instead of that first i'm going to change the title to tip calculator and then after that i'm going to specify the h1 element so the first h1 element is going to be inside the container which is going to be the name as calculate calculate and if i press the enter key and instead of that i'm going to specify the h1 element which is going to be the heading of the calculator okay if i save it and use the plugin First, I need to dispose it. Then, if I click on the go live, then you can see the things are working perfectly fine. After that, I also want to link the CSS part. So, it's actually in the same directory. So, it's going to be the CSS, which is a style.css file. Then, also, I'm going to specify the script tag. And for the script, I'm going to use the src element. And it's also in the same directory. So, now our script and the CSS file is also connected with this particular index.html file, which is a tip calculator project. So our next step is to place the other elements of the screen which is this input type labels and this button then another two labels and also this particular actually a span elements so all of this we need to place inside this particular container which is a this container so that later on we are going to use this container to create this nice looking card effect so all of this will be done in the css part of the course in the css part of the lecture so first i need a form so this is actually a simple form there is no data is going on the back end part so i'm going to remove the action attribute of the form this is just the basics html and css project or i can say that the java basic javascript project then the next is actually i need a label so it's going to be a label and inside of this i also doesn't require this for property here i will be using the bill amount okay so this bill amount is going to be inside the bracket and i will say it inside the dollars then after that we need the input type so it's going to be like input so input type is going to be number because we are working with the numbers and then i need to specify the id again this id will be used inside the javascript 
so bill amount okay and then we need to add the required attribute otherwise it's going to give us the error because these are required without this we are not going to able to because without this we are not able to solve the tip so label another label is required for the tip percentage so here i will be adding a tip percentage okay so this is going to be in a form of percentage so again i'm using the bracket and the percentage symbol so where is my percentage symbol it's actually in the 50 of the numerical number part of the keyboards okay and then we need the input type so input and input type again this is going to be a number one because the number is required for the calculation and then the id so i'm going to specify the id as percentage okay so if i just simply control save it then you can see these two elements okay so now right now you can see this tip percentage is coming right after this input type this is because this entire input type doesn't have the like a block level structure so also i need to specify here a required property so if i use this required property then you can see all these four elements is now actually appearing at the browser screen so next we need to close the form because our form part is done the next part is actually we need to use specify this button okay so to do that we need to come outside of this particular form element and here i will be specifying the another div so this is going to be for the results okay results and uh, i'm pressing the enter key inside of this result first i will be using the paragraph element so this paragraph is for the tip amount so this is just for the heading of the element and then inside of that i will be using the span element okay so span and i press the enter key then you can see it's actually become the amount so first i need to actually make a little space here opening the tag and then closing because commit is actually not working here and providing the wrong output as i will say the amit then it's going to be the id it's going to be tip amount and right now i'm going to show the zero as the default i can just simply remove it there is no need to do that then i'm going to copy this one because it is going to be the same and then here i will be change the tip amount to total amount that we need to pay and then the id is also like a total amount total amount okay so this is actually all the elements is now appearing at the screen okay so this is it for the html part of the lecture so our next step is to add the css for this tip calculator so that it looks like a little bit more interesting so now we are going to add the css part to this particular tip calculator project so for that we need to use this style.css file so I'm going to click on this style.css file. So right now you can see this entire file is empty. So the first element that I'm going to select inside of this style.css file is the body element. Inside of that, first I'm going to change the font family. The font family that I will be using is area. And if I control save it, then you can see the font of all the elements is actually changed. I'm going to remove this Helvetica. And if I save it, then you can see right now the font is changed. The next property that I want to change is the margin property, which is going to be zero. And the padding property is also going to be zero. And then I need to specify the grayish color, which is going to be like F2, F2 and F2. If I control save it, then you can see there is a light gray color. So that's the body element code. And now the next is we need to specify the code for the calculate. So this is a main container inside all the element is present. So we need to style this so that we can get this nice looking white container. So to do that, we are going to use this calculate ID. Means the calculate selector. So make sure you have typed the correct ID selector. Otherwise you will get the error means your code is not going to work. So I am going to here use the max width property. So max width, I am going to specify 500 pixel. Then the margin is going to be like not max resolution, it's going to be like margin property. So margin top and right is going to be like 50 pixel, means from top and bottom. And then left and right is going to be like auto. So if I just simply say you without saving, if I just add this photo, you can see this is actually appearing at the corner of the screen. So once I do the control save, then you can see it's actually appearing at the very corner of the screen. Okay. 
so margin auto note auto is like a u t o auto wise i have made a typo which is zero so by there is the output browser so if i control save it and if i maximize it then you can see it's actually appearing at the center of the screen because from left and right it's going to automatically calculate the margin okay so that is why because sometimes it's going to confuse the persons and also i'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that the both screens can be seen clearly okay the next property that i want to use is the background color so for background color we need to specify the white color so that we can get this nice looking white color and then i need to specify the padding property so padding is going to be like 30 pixel control save it then you can see we get this nice looking effect of the card after that i need to specify the border radius property so the border radius is going to be like 5 pixel so that we can get the rounded corners now i'm actually using the 90 percent of the zoom and then i'm using the box shadow property so that we can provide this nice shadow to this card so to do that first we need to specify 0 0 then 10 pixel and after that i need to use the rgba property and inside of that i'm going to specify the value of the rgb to 0 and the alpha is going to be like 0 0.1 so once I save it, then you can see we have this nice looking box shadow to this particular calculate card. So that's marks the completion of the code for this calculate division tag by using the calculate selector. Then the next element that we want to style is the H1 element. And inside of this H1 element, I'm going to specify the text align property to center. So that is going to appear at the center of the screen. The next element that we want to style is the form element. So this form is actually acting as a parent to this all five tags. The one thing is you need to notice inside the HTML part, I actually forgot to add the button. So I have added this button because I forgot to add in the HTML part of the step calculator. So make sure you type this button type button on click calculate tip. So inside of the on click, we are going to use this calculate tip as a function. So on click of this button, this function will be triggered. And inside of this function, we have our tip calculator logic, which is the part of the JavaScript. So the JavaScript part, we are going to start after the completion of the CSS part. Okay. So now we are going to select the form element. Note form is actually the form element. Inside of the form, we need to specify the properties. So the first property is actually the display. So display and will be using the flex. If I control save it, then you can see all the five elements is now actually appearing at the one row. Then I'm going to specify the flex direction that will accept the column as a value. So this for flex direction property has a value column. So once I did that, then all the five elements is now appearing inside the column level means one after the other. Not in a row, in a vertical formation. Okay. And this is the code for the form. Then I need to specify the code for the label. Right now you can see these two labels are appearing very close to these input types. So for that, we need to use the margin bottom property. So margin bottom is going to be like 10 pixel. Then you can see still there is a problem with this tip percentage and the button. So we need to specify the margin bottom property to these two input type as well, which is the next selector we want to select. So input type and here I will be using the padding. So padding is going to be like 10 pixel. And then I need to use the margin bottom property. So margin bottom is going to be like 20 pixel. So once I did that, then there is a difference between the tip percentage and also with the button. And then the next property that we want to use is the border to these two input types because right now they are actually having the black border. So you want to change that. So to change that, we need to use the here a border property. So the border property is going to be like one pixel solid. And then we need to provide the color. So it is going to like CCC. And after that, we need to add here a border radius property. So border radius is going to be like five pixel. Not says pixel is going to like five pixels. So once I save it, then this all the cards having the same border. Or you can go with the three pixel. If you want to reduce the rounded corner, so 3 pixel is working fine here. The next step is we need to style this button. So just selecting the button as well. 
button and then inside this button we need to use the padding first padding from all the side is going to be like 10 pixel because this button is not short it's actually taking up the whole space of this container right now this is the padding and then the leftover space is taken by the button as well all right and after that we need to use the background color property so we need to provide the background color in a green so we have a code for this green background color button which is 4 c a f and then we need to use the f0 property I control save it then you can see we have this green button then we have this color property which is hashtag fff and then we need to save it and you can see the font size means the font color of the button is changed then we need to specify the border none property control save it and also we need to specify the border radius property so the border radius is going to be like 5 pixel or you can say we are going to use the 3 pixel border radius property is actually having a rounded corners from all four sides okay and now the next property we need to use the cursor property so cursor property is going to be pointer so when we hover over it button then it's going to change the cursor also i need to make this calculate to be a little bit more appearing so for that we need to increase the font size to like 18 pixel save it then you can see the font size also i need to use the text transform to uppercase Control save it then all of the actually text is appearing all of the characters are now in a capital means uppercase they are actually have been transformed then I'm again using the button with the hover state of the button so that when we hover over it we are actually going to change the effect of the button is the background color of the button so for that I'm just using this background color property okay and then I will be changing the color code so for this one i will be using 3 e 8 e 4 1 so this will be the color code we are going to use so when i hover over it then you can see it's become a little bit more darker which indicates that we are actually want to click the button okay so the next property that we want to stylize is the result property this is a class selector so we are going to use it here like dot results so this result is having the margin top property now this margin top property is actually used to create this line like effect so this create this line we are going to use here a margin top property so this margin top is going to be like 30 pixel and then we need to use here a border top property so we need to specify the border at the top so it's going to be like one pixel border then we need to use this solid and then the color of the border which is again a triple c color to create the border like this okay so one pixel and here i have made a typo this is a solid once i do that then you can see we are seeing this nice looking line okay and then also we need to add the padding so padding from top is going to be like 20 pixel once i did the padding then you can see there is a difference between these two and now our next step is to actually select the paragraph element under this result class okay so to do that first we need to select the results and inside of this we need to select the paragraph element so here i'm using the multiple selectors and then i will be using here a margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 10 pixel so now they have the difference so if i just make it here like a 20, 15 pixel okay so margin make sure we are actually in the plugin one and then this will be the end of the property and also i'm going to select the span element as well so this will be the span element now this span element will have the property to i'm going to change the font weight this span element is going to have bold weight so this will be the bold now they are actually appearing a little bit darker once the value is changed from the javascript code so guys that marks the completion of the code for the css part so you can see they are actually appearing almost the same except this is looking a little bit smaller that is because it has a 90 percent zoom so if i increase the zoom to 100 percent then you can see both are same the only difference is with these two elements i have added here a zero also this button text is actually in a uppercase means the text is transformed to uppercase all right so our next step is to add the javascript to this tip calculator so our next step is to add the javascript part to this tip calculator 
So for that we need to open our script.js file. So I also want to minimize it means resize this window of the browser. So the first thing is we need to get the ID of these two input elements and also the ID of this button. Okay. And then we also need to get the IDs of these two. So totally we have to get the element ID of these five elements. So for that first I need to use here a function keyword because inside the HTML part of the button we have specified an on click event. So this calculate tip is the name of the function that we need to specify here and then we need to start the braces and also the body of this function. So all the code will be present inside the function means we are going to type all the code inside of this function. Okay. And the first thing is we need to get the input values. So get the input type values. So all first inputs are these two. So here first I am going to create the variable of the const type is equal to so it is going to be like will amount amount is equal to so here first I will be using here a parse float function and because the will may be in a form of decimals as well means it will have a float value. So inside of that I will be using a document dot get element by id. So get element by id inside of that I will be specifying id name. So the id name is actually bill amount. So we need to copy this entire id name. So control c and then here inside of that we are going to place the bill amount. And similarly I am going to and also I need to specify one more value before copying the node Arial. It's actually a value. Okay and then I'm going to copy this line of code and pasting it one more time and at this time we are going to use here a tip percentage tip percentage and then we need to change the id as well so the id of the tip percentage is tip percentage so here we are going to specify the id name tip percentage and the rest of the thing is remain same then i need to add here a calculate the tip so i'm going to write here a so the first thing is we need to create here another variable which is tip amount is equal to so this tip amount is going to be like bill amount the amount that we have entered in, inside of this input type is going to multiply with the fraction part of the tip percentage so the tip percentage we need to calculate inside the braces okay so here we are need to add the tip percentage the fraction value of the tip percentage is divided with the 100% means the 100 then you have to apply the terminator and after that we need to add to calculate the total amount here we need to add the create the another variable which is of total amount so total amount total amount is equal to tip amount so we have the tip amount and then we need to add it with the bill amount okay so this will be the logic to calculate the total amount and also we have calculated the tip amount then we need to display the result to the span elements that will be act as a result for the label okay so for that first we need to get the element of the span elements so document dot get element by id and inside of that we need to specify the id so the id is tip amount tip amount and here i need to paste the id then we need to convert it into means we need to update the text content because the span element has the text content property so text content and also it has the inner text then i'm going to here use the dollar symbol and then i will be use the plus symbol to concatenate it with the value that we have get it so tip amount that we have calculated inside of this variable which is tip amount so we need to use the variable tip amount and then i need to get into the two fixed function so two fixed function and then i will be here using the two so if we don't use the two function then i will be first show you the output before applying this function Control c and also again i'm going to copy this line of code and pasting it to one more time and inside of this i'm going to change the id which is total amount and here i will be specifying the total amount and then i need text content need to update the text content then this dollar symbol will be present and then the 
value of the variable name I am going to change it then control C to actually save it means control S to save it then it's time to check whether this the code is working so I am going to enter here 100 or I can add the 1000 then I am going to enter the tip percentage to 10 if I calculate then you can see we are getting the result 100 and we need to pay the tip amount as 100 means the 100 tip amount we need to pay which is 100 dollar and the total amount that we need to pay is 1100 okay so similarly this will be the our like a final product that we have built here I do that then if to get these two decimal digits like our dollar one means these two decimal digits then where we can use the two fixed function that is why I have actually removed this function and then we need to specify here too okay if I use just coming back to the our own project one which is uh, this capital case one so if I use this two fixed two here also inside the total amount save it again I am here specifying the 100 value tip percent is going to be 5 then you can see we get this 2 decimal after this point we get these 2 decimal digits means these 2 zeros so if I use here 3 then if I use here 1 100 and then the tip amount is up to 5 then we get 3 here so make sure you use 2 and it's totally up to you if you want to use 2 fixed so that you can get this zeros okay again i'm going to enter some these types of value and uh, calculate it then you can get the decimal digits up to two on the after the point so this is our tip calculator project so that's it for this lecture i hope you like this particular project if you like this particular project then leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to grow my course also it will help me to improve my future courses so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to build the to-do list application from scratch inside this lecture. So let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this particular lecture. So you can see this is the final project that we are going to build. So you can see this is having a nice little card. We have the heading which is to-do list. Then we have this input type which is add new to do the placeholder text and then we have this nice hover effect on the button so if I click on add then you can see nothing is happening so once I enter the text inside this first to do this is first to do to do task and if I click on add then you can see the task is actually added to this particular list and if I add here a second to do and if I enter add then you can see the second to do is add after the first to do so it's actually creating the list so the first part is we need to start with the html part of this to do list application so here you can see inside the visual studio code i have created three files the first is index.html the second is script.js and the third is style.css file so i have created all of these three files to save some time okay so i'm going to just increase the size of this visual studio code and then i'm going to resize the browser window so that you can see the output once I type the code ok so just make it a little bit more bigger and I am going to remove this one and the next thing is here I will be using the h1 so it's going to be like to do list ok so if I save it I save it and then if I just run this project by using the go live server extension then you can see to do list alright so this will be the heading for the project now we need to wrap this h1 element inside the div tag which will act as a container for the project so for that we need to here use the container so I am using the emit shortcut so here I will be writing the container and pressing the tab key Inside of this container, I will be co pasting the code of the h1 element. If I save it, then you can see nothing is changed because the, there is only a single element. Now we need to actually specify the rest of the elements. So the another element is actually the input type, which is type is going to be text, so that we can enter the text into the input of the element. And then we need to specify the ID. So the ID is going to be like new to do item. 
Okay, so it's going to be a, or I can say the new to do input to make it more meaningful. Then I need the placeholder text. So enter your to do. Okay, so this will be the placeholder text for the input type. And after that, we need a button. So here we need to add the button. Then the ID of this button. So it's like add to do or btn, which is a add to the button. Then I'm going to specify the here add as a text to the button, which will be displayed. So if I control save it, then you can see these two elements is now appearing at the screen. The next element is we need is to actually creating the list. For that we need to use the UL element. So this is going to have an ID of to do list. This will we are going to update with the JavaScript. So there is no text inside of this, and we don't need to specify any list item. We are going to do that with the use of JavaScript. So I'm going to style the other these three elements in the CSS part of this to do list application. Okay, so our next step is to add the CSS part to this to do list application. So for that we need to use the style.css file. So I'm going to click on this style.css file. So here you can see it's totally an empty. So we want to provide the code inside of it. So that we can stylize the to do list. Okay. So the first element that I'm going to stylize is the body element in which I'm going to apply the font family. So here I will be typing the body element and starting the block of the body and then to specify the font family property. So the font I'm using is Arial sans serif, just removing this Helvetica font. So this is not required or you can use it as per your needs. And then I will need to specify the background color. So background color, as you know, it's a light gray, which is F2, F2. And if I save it, then you can see we get this nice looking grayish color. And after that, I need to specify the container. So make sure the spelling is, otherwise you will get error, means your CSS code will not work. Then we need to add here the max width property to the container. So the max width is going to be like 600 pixel. This is the max width property. Then I need to specify the margin, not max resolution, it's like a margin property I want to use. So from top and bottom it's going to like zero. And then from left and right, it's automatically going to calculate the margin. Okay. So the next is we need to use the padding property. So padding is going to be like 20 pixel. And then I need to specify the background color. So the background color is going to be the nice white. So you can see this is, then we need to specify the border radius. So the border radius is going to be like five pixel. And then I need to specify the box shadow, which is uh, gives the nice box shadow. So it's going to be zero pixel, zero, zero. And then I need to specify the five pixel or I can go with the 10 pixel. Then I need to specify the color to the border. So it's going to zero, zero, zero. And then the alpha is going to be like 0 0.3. If I save it, then you can see we get this nice looking border. So our next step is to style this H1 element. So action, and then we need to add the code to this H1 element. So margin top. It's going to be like zero pixel, and then we need to add the line property. So text align is going to be center. Save it. Then you can see it's going to the center of the screen, and then we need to specify the color. So the color to change the font color. So it's going to be like uh, slightly lighter than the black color. So that marks the completion for the code of the H1 element. Then we need to specify the code for this input type for the CSS. So the first is input and then I am here using the type attribute selector. So I am going to specify the input type is equal to text. Okay. Then the block of this input type. So here I will be using the padding property. From all the sides I am going to give the 8 pixel padding. I am using the 8 pixel. Then I am using the font size property to 16 pixel. Save it. Then you can see it's becoming a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I have using the board property is equal to none. And then I need to use the border radius property. So border radius is going to like two pixel solid border. And then the color. So I'm going to here use the hex color code. If I save it, then if I click it, then you can see the border is appearing. Okay, so on click of the input type, then we get the border. Then I need to specify the width. So width is uh, like uh, I am actually using 80% width. Okay. So it's going to give us a nice big border. All right. And this will be the border. Border is none. Actually, I want a little border, not none border. I actually want a border like a one pixel border. But this is not looking good. So one pixel solid. 
and this is the color I will be using here like uh, F2, F2, F2. So this will give us a light border. Okay, so that if I click it, then it will become darker. So this is the border I am actually using because the non-border property doesn't make any sense because it's the white and our input type is also white. So we need to make a little differentiation between these two elements. Okay, and the last property is margin from right is going to be like a 10 pixel because right now this button and this input type do both are appearing at these very close to each other. So that is why I am actually using the whole 10 pixel. Then it's actually having a 10 pixel between these two elements. So that's it. So that is for the input type. Then next we need to use the button to style the button. So here I will be using the button and then I need to specify the code button. So right first I want to apply. So padding is from left and right is going to be 8 pixel not 80 pixel it's like 8 pixel and then the 20 pixels if i save it then you can see we have this nice button and then i need to specify the round color so background color is going to be like this default color i'm using it and then i need to specify the font color so font color is like fff for the dark white or i can say that the white color then we need to remove the border so the border is going to be like and after that, I need to change the cursor property to pointer. So if I, you can see, now we need the hover element. So I'm just going to copy it, paste it, removing the three properties. Also this padding one. Actually, also this log. And then I need to here specify the code for the border, which is 333, which will give the little darker one. And then I need to here specify the hover state. It's a hover plus. Then if I hover it, then it becomes a little more darker. Okay, so that marks the completion for the code of the button as well. So the next style that we want to do is the style for the to do and the UL element. But right now we doesn't able to see the UL element. So that is why we are not going to provide this style to the at this point of time. We are going to provide the style once we write the JavaScript code. So our next step is to write the JavaScript code. So our next step is to add the JavaScript part to this project. So let's start with it. So that we need to open our script.js file. And this is the style we have done in the previous CSS part of the project. So the first thing is we need to fetch the ID of the elements. So right now we have three IDs we need to fetch, which is input type and this to do list, which is a UL list and the button. Okay. So that I'm actually here. Seeing the ID, the first ID is a new to do. So I'm going to copy this ID and coming back to the script part. So here I will be using the first cons variable and then the list of the, then I'm going to specify the name as to do list. Then I will be using the document dot get element by ID. And then here I need to specify the ID inside the double quotes. And after that, I need to copy this line of code and pasting it into two more times and then I need to specify here new to do input also then the name of this variable is going to like add to do btn okay I need to copy the id which is add to do btn which is the id of the button so I'm going to specify it here and I need to copy the id of the to do list to do list ID. So this is a new to do list. So this is actually the to do list ID. I have actually copied the wrong one. Okay. So that's now completely ID. The list is for to do list. New to do input, new to do input, then add to do button and then add to do button. So these are the three variables. We have now finally fetched the ID of the elements. And after that, here I will be using the add to do button, add event listener. So instead of that, we are going to add the listener and then I need to specify the column. Then I will be here using the click. In here, I'm going to specify the function. The event that we are going to, or I can use the arrow function. So, arrow function, we need to provide the fat arrow. Okay, so this will be the arrow function. Then, need to specify the body of the arrow function. Okay, and then inside of that, we need to add the const variable. So, this is basically used to hold the new to do text. Whatever we will type inside this to do input type it's going to hold inside of this particular variable okay so it is going to be new to do text is equal to 
then we need to set the value of new to do input dot value. So whatever value is coming from the input type, we are going to set it here. Node is actually value. And after that, we need to check for the empty to do. So we are going to use if condition, then the body of the if. Instead of that, first I will be writing the new to do input. So we need to check whether the new to do input is not equal to empty string. If it is an empty, then we don't want to allow it to enter into the list. That is why this condition is here used. After that, I am again going to create another constant variable. So this is time is actually the new to do item is equal to document dot get element by id. So we don't need to get the element. We actually we want to create the element. Create element. So we want to actually append the element inside the HTML document. So we actually creating a new to do item. Okay. So this will be the new to do item variable. This will actually be the item that will be entered inside the list. And after that, we need to use the new to do item dot inner text. So after creating the list, we need to update its inner text is equal to the new to do text that we are getting from the input type. So we let me first complete it new to do text. So these two lines of code is the, it's actually going to create the ally element in the HTML document. And after creating the document, we need to update its inner text value with the new to do text. This new to do text value is coming from the new to do input, which is uh, this input. Okay, so these two lines of code is actually clear to you, I hope. Then the next we need to create the delete button. Right now you can see this is a delete button. So we need to create this HTML element as well. So again, I'm going to here use the const be const keyword, and then I will be here using delete, delete, and to do dtn. So it's going to be like a button is equal to document dot. Then I need to again create the element. So it is going to be like create element, and then what element we want to create? So we want to create the button element. Okay. After creating the button, then we need to append it with the to do okay so again we need to create the same process we need to update its text property so that we can provide this x button just to indicate the cross to actually delete the to do okay so again here i will be using the delete to do button dot inner text we are going to update its inner text value then we need to initialize it with the delete to do btn value Okay, so this is for the, or I can go with the like uh, x, we need to append it, not delete one. First, we need to add the x here, to do will be created. So if I just simply, I enter here this, and if I enter, then you can see nothing is working, because right now, we are not displaying the result inside the UL. We are just creating these to-dos inside the variable scope. We are not displaying it. So let me first complete the code, then I will be show you the output. After that, we need to add the class list element to this delete to do button so that it can delete the to do from the UI. So for that here I will be using again delete to do btn dot class list. So this will be the class list dot I'm going to add using the function add then we need to start the bracket and inside bracket we need to specify the code inside the double quotes. So we actually want to delete to do btn. So whatever the button we have, so here we need to specify the delete, delete to do btn. Okay, so this will actually use to delete the to do button, and then after that we need to here use the delete to do btn, and then we need to add here the add event listener so that when we click on the button, then we can remove the to do so for that again we need to specify the terminator here and then we need to start the specify the event which is going to be the click event then we need to specify here the function then the body of the function and inside of this function we need to add a line of code which is new to do item so new to do item which is actually the new to do item this one this is a variable one we need to call a function called remove Okay, so this when we click on this X button, then it's going to remove the to do from the list. And after that, we need to create the list means append the code inside the list. 
once we add the delete procedure we need to update the to do as well. so new to do input dot append child so this will be our append child and then we are going to use here delete to do btn okay and then we to add the because once we delete the, the delete functionality will be performed when the button is clicked then we also need to append the delete button inside the new item because it will be also as a act as a part of the task or i can say that the to do then we need to update the to do list which is our main ul list okay so inside of that we need to use the append child functionality append child method then inside of that we need to provide the new to do item which is the main new to do item view this this will be the new to do item we need to append it to the list so that we can display it and then we need to set the new to our once we enter the value we need to also make sure once we click on it this edit means this input type will become empty so to do that we are going to here add the code which is new to do input dot value is equals to empty string so that marks the completion of the code for the to do list application okay so if i completely save it and if i run this project by just refreshing it and here i will be adding my first this is the first if i add here first task and if i click on add then you can see we are getting here a empty one why and if i enter then you can see we have this empty one we can delete it but right now the text is not appearing we are actually adding did to do so there is a mistake so we need to figure out where is we have made a typo so guys the problem is here inside of this code is we actually comparing here the wrong input variable so here we need to compare the new to do text instead of new to do input so i'm going to copy this and i will be replacing it here so once we compare the text if it is not empty then we want to execute the code also here instead of new to do input we need to update the value of the new to do item because right now this is actually holding the list item okay so we need to replace it this new to do input with this variable so i'm going to copy this here and i will be pasting it here after that once we control save it and then i will be adding here the this is the to do now to do this is to do if i can add it then you can see now we are actually able to see the text then we can add here a drink water and if i control means click on the add button then you can see we are getting the second to do drink water if i click on this then we can also delete the to do so the next step is we need to add the css so that we can see like uh, this okay so you can see like this one so to add this type of css we need to coming back to this add css file so the first thing is we need to add the css for the ul which is for the unordered list selecting the ul selector which is for the unordered list so first step is we need to add the list style to none so that we can remove the basic styling like bullets of the list then we need to specify the padding to 0 then i need to specify the margin top property which is going to be like 20 pixel so if i save it if i enter here like some text this and if i enter here then you can see then you can see there is nothing is changed because we need to style the list element as well the only thing is actually removed is the bullets of the list okay then i'm going to select the li element and then inside of this li element first time to specify the padding spreading from all side is going to be like 10 pixel and then i need to specify the background property which is the background color so the background color is like three times e which is for the dark then from the board margin bottom property which is going to be like five pixel and after that i need to specify a border radius property which is also be five pixel then we need to specify the display property so display is going to be like flex and then we need to specify the specify content center and then align items at center so as i save it then you can see the text is now text and the button is actually at the center of the screen so instead of doing that justify content center we can add it as the space between so if i save it so now if i enter here a long text like this is the first to do to do task to be to be completed okay so now the element is actually changed also we need to 
add the style to this button because right now they are actually following the same style code for this add button. So to do that, but before that we also need to specify one more element which is the ally. Ally and then here I will be using the last child function means the last child property. So last child property is going to lie bottom zero pixel. If I save it, then you can see this property is now applied. Then we need to add the code for the button. So we have specified the ID to the button inside the JavaScript file. You can see that this is a delete to do class list add. So we are actually specifying the class selector to this delete to do button variable. We can add adding the class element directly means dynamically with the JavaScript code. So we can use this ID name, which is delete to do button. Control C, copy it. And then if I coming back to the CSS part, here I will be using the dot and then pasting the name of the class. Then instead of that, first we need to add the background color. So the background color is going to be like red. So here I will be using the red color. Okay. And then I need to specify the font color. So the font color is going to be like white. So I'm using the color names here. You can RGB function just to speed up the process. I just use here the color name. The color is going to be none. And then I need to specify the padding. So padding is going to be like 5 pixels from the top and bottom. Then from left and right is going to be like 10 pixels. And after that, I need to use border radius property. So border radius is going to be like 3 pixels. And then I will be using the cursor property. Or circle is like cursor pointer. So once I save it, then you can see the button style is actually changed. The only thing is need, we need to change the hover state of the button as well. So if I control C with and control C V, then here we need to add the or element. So delete button and then we need to change the color here. So here I will be using the hashtag D32 for my color name. So this will be the color which is a slightly darker than the previous color. Okay, so that's marks the completion of the code for the CSS part as well. The leftover CSS part. This is style we need to add after the JavaScript code because all of this style is actually coming dynamically. That is the reason we have specified this code once we completed the JavaScript. So if I completely refresh it and then add the like drink water. Okay, do coding stuff. So once you complete the to-do list task, then you can simply, if you did the coding stuff, then you can remove it. Okay, so that marks the completion of this to-do list application lecture. So if you like this lecture, then leave a review because your review definitely helps me to actually improve my courses. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we will be building a digital clock application by using JavaScript. So let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this whole lecture. So this is the application that we are going to build. So you can see this has a nice looking this box like structure that has rounded corners and digital lock. And then this is the timer that is currently working on. So this is our hours and this is for the like minutes and then we have this seconds. So we are going to build this application. Then we are going to style this particular if like a design. This is a little bit tricky. So we are going to work with this CSS part as well. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the project. So here you can see I have already created three files inside this particular folder, which is digital clock web. So inside of that, I have created the index.html file with some boilerplate code. And then we have empty style.cs file and then script.js file. I'm going to paste HTML ellipse. So I'm going to just simply adjust my viewport a little bit so that you can see the whenever I type the code and I will show you the output as well. And then inside the body, First, I'm going to add the code. Okay, so the first thing is we need to add the container. So I'm using here the emit plugin feature. So it will give me the container. Okay. And inside of that, I will be using the like another element which is for the card. So I'm going to here using the two different approaches, one for the card and one for the container. So I'll specify the class as card. So this is the main card that we are actually going to use it. Okay, so this will be the main card and inside of that I will be placing the h1 element which is the digital clock and then I save it and if I use the go live plugin then it's going to show the output with the h1 element which is digital clock and after that digital clock we need to place the another div which is used for the 
like a container so this will be the clock div inside of that we are going to place this five span elements okay so again i need to type here div and then i will be specifying the class as clock so this will be like our clock and inside of that we need to add five span elements so i'm going to here use five span element by multiplying it with five if I press enter then you can see I got five span elements like maintain it then I need to specify the class so it's going to be the class and it's going to like time element so I'm going to copy this code here by control C and then I will be pasting it here and then after that I will be pasting it here in the if I save it and if I go here and you can see nothing is appearing so I'm going to place here zero zero and also 00, zero and then here also 00. zero. And if I control save it, then you can see we are now we need to specify the colon as well. Right now you can see this column. So for that, I will be using here this. And so this span element will be used. And also I'm going to provide the class here. But later on in this CSS part, we are going to actually modify its style a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to here write the colon element. And then I'm also going to copy this class and paste it here inside of this one as well then you can see this is now the colon is appearing so this is all for the css part of this particular project which is digital clock application so our next step is to add the style sheet code for this digital clock application so now we are going to start with the css part of this project which is our digital clock application so for that we need to use the style.css file so right now you can see inside our style.css file nothing is actually typed. So the first element that we are going to style is the container element. This is the this main container that act as a parent for the other elements. So we are going to start with the first container. So here I am going to type in the container. And then I am going to start the block of the container. Also I am going to close verify the name of the container. I am going to copy this and I will be pasting it here so that this doesn't give me any error okay the first property that we need is actually the display property so display i'm going to use the flex if i do that then you can see both of the elements is now appearing in the single row then after that i need to provide the flex direction property so flex direction i'm going to provide the column okay and then after that i will be using here a justify content is actually going to be center if i save it and then align items is actually going to be the center so now you can see they are actually appearing at the center of the screen okay so that is why i did that where is our window this is the window i actually forgot to resize it again so i'm going to resize it and so that you can see the code output while i'm typing it inside the css part okay and next property we actually need to specify the height so height is going to be like 100 vh which is view height okay and if i control save it then you can see this is now perfectly at the center of the screen and then after that we need to specify the background color so background color here will be using the hexadecimal notation code which is the d3 not add the right it's like d3 and capital d and capital d3 so this will be the color code we are going to use for the container now you can see you can see the default styling of the browser which is the body element so we need to style the default style of the body means restyle it or we can say that the remove the default style of the browser from the body so to do that for, for that we need to select the body selector so i'm going to select the body selector at the top and modify its content so the first thing is we need to use the margin property so here i will be using the margin is actually going for the zero and then padding is actually zero and then i need to use the border style property border style is going to the box border uh, i can say that the border box okay so if i save it then you can see the padding is the default styling is removed so that way actually want now the next step is we need to style the card element which will be the main card so that we can make the our application look like this so for that we need to select the card so here i will be using the dot card card and then opening the body of the card element inside of that first i need to specify the background color 
so background color is going to be like hashtag FFF which is for the complete white okay so this will be our card element and instead of that first I also want to specify the border property so border radius is going to like 13 pixel and then I need to specify the box shadow so box shadow is like 0 pixel and then 0 pixel and then from 10 pixel we actually want it and I will be using here a RGBA function which is 0 0 0 and then here I will be using 0 0.5 if I save it, then you can see we have, then you can see this is the, this is actually not styled. We are going to do that also. But first we need to style the, this card and the H1 element. We are going to style one by one and later on our application will look like this. Okay. The application that we want to build. And after that we need to add the border property as well. So for the border, I will be using here two pixel border. It is a solid border and the color is going to be like hashtag 632 and we have df8. So this will be the color we are going to use for the border. And after that, I'm going to here specify the max width property. So max width is going to be like 400 pixel. Okay. Now after specifying the max width property, you can see this card has a border as well, the rounded border, but there is a one problem. You can see this timer elements, which is our span element, is not appearing inside the card. The reason for that is actually we have actually forgot to add it inside the card element because right now this is a separate two elements. So we need to add this block div inside this card div as well. So I'm going to just simply cut this code from here and paste it inside the card div because these two are the child of the card, then it will be inside the card and if I save it then you can see now the timer elements is appearing inside the card one okay so now it's time to style the h1 element because uh, we have fixed the problem so the first thing is we need to select the h1 element so I'm directly going to select with the tag selector name and inside of that first I need to specify the font size but there is no need to specify the font size because h1 has the maximum height and width so we are going to Ignore this property right now. I just use it for the experimental purpose. So text design property, I'm going to use this center. And after that, I'm here using the background property. So background is going to be like uh, okay. So here I actually need to use the background color because we are not using the any image. Okay, so we are using here a background color. So the color we are going to use this same color, which is this blue one, because we are going to use the same the border that we have specified. You can see this is the color we get it now we need to modify it so the first is we need to add the another property which is padding from top so padding from top is going to like 10 pixel and then padding from bottom also is going to like 10 pixels so i have actually don't used here a shorthand property of the css i just simply specifying the property manually because i need to adjust it if i do that then you can see this is actually appearing at the screen off as well so don't worry we are going to fix it one by one you can see this is the corner is appearing this is not a corner for this one this is actually the border corners we are going to fix all of this one by one and then when to add the margin bro bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 10 pixel and then we need to use the overflow so it's going to be like hidden so once i do that then you can see overflow hidden property is actually displaying its result and then we need to specify the color so color i'm using here a white color which is fff and then we are getting the here a white color of the digital clock okay guys and then after that here we need to use the border radius property so the border radius is going to like 10 pixel and then we need to use here a 10 pixel and then after that here i'm using the 0 pixel and then 0 pixel if I do that, then you can see the corner edges is actually fixed. Okay, so this is for the our main header part, the main label part. Okay, so here you can see this digital clock. Okay, so we are going to fix one by one. Now it's time to specify the code for the clock one. So this is a clock element. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one and uh, coming back to the CSS file. So here I will be writing a clock and I start the body of the element and first I need to specify the padding so padding is going to like 25 pixel if I control save it then you can see the border element is taking some space okay and then I'm going to use the display property 
so we are going to use the display flex if i do that then nothing is changed i think so we need to use the align property as well align items at the center so align item center and then i need to specify the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 10 pixel okay so this is actually working fine then we need to add the time element so we have our time element okay so the span classes that is our this time element so we are going to provide the style for that as well so the first thing we need to add here a font size property so font size is going to have 48 pixel okay and then after that we need to add here a font weight property so font weight is going to be like uh, our bold and then we need to add here a color property which is used to change the color of the font so i'm going to use here a black so zero 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 okay and after that i need to here specify the margin property so margin is going to like zero pixel and then we need to use the 10 pixel so from left and right is going to like zero pixel and from top and bottom is going to like 10 pixels you can see it's actually now appearing perfectly okay and then i need to here use the another which is a colon element which is used to actually style these colons right now they are actually very tiny and small okay so i'm going to write here an element so here i have forgot mistaken the name and then inside of that i'm going to specify the same property coming back and just only reducing the size of the font so you can see now this is what our digital clock looks like the css bar same as it is like this one the only difference is that this one has a like a, i have to resize the font of this one and inside of that i didn't do that so you can do it as per your need if you want so that's it for the css part of this particular project which is our digital clock so the next step is to add the javascript to this project so now let's start with the javascript part of this particular project so for that we need to use the script.js file so instead of that file first we need to start with the update clock method so this method function will be called when we launch the project so we are going to call this function outside of the project by using the set interval method means after one second we are going to call this function once the project is loaded to the screen okay or we can say the project is loaded into the browser so first we need to here specify the function so function is going to like update or i can say that the update clock function okay so this will be the function name that we are going to use and we are going to call this function by using the set interval method and instead of that we need to specify the method okay so this the callback we are going to specify here not an like uh, arrow function callback we need to pass here an update clock callback without the brackets and then instead of that we need to specify the 1000 millisecond which is actually equal for the one second and then once we load this project you will see nothing is happening because after that whatever code we will write inside of this function it will be executed after one second okay so let's do it so the first thing is we need to get the ids of the elements okay like these three one and after that we need to add the logic to calculate the hours minutes and seconds so the first thing is i'm going to get the ids of the elements so right now you can see the inside the html part i didn't specify the id to these three span elements so it's time to specify the id as well so here i will be using the id attribute and then instead of that i will be specifying the id as hours and this one is going to for the minutes and this is the third one is actually for the like our is for the seconds okay so we need to fetch the id of all of these three elements inside the script.js so for fetching the id we are going to here use the const okay so for the const so the first thing is we need to here type the hours element okay is equal to then it's going to be like get or i can say that a document not get it's the document dot get element of id inside of the brackets and you start here the brackets and semicolon and then we need to specify here 
hours. Make sure the name is perfectly typed. And then I'm going to copy this into two more time to save a little bit of the time. Okay. And here I will be using the minutes and this will is going for the seconds. And here also I need to specify the minutes and this is for the seconds. Okay. So now the element ID is fetched properly. Then we need to create here three variables. Now before creating the hours, minutes and seconds variable, we need to first create a variable to actually hold the date object. So for that, first I'm going to create here let now and inside of this now we are going to initialize the value with the use of new operator and we are going to use the date of ob class object. So we created a variable of the date and it's having the reference means this now variable has a reference of this date object. Okay, and after that we need to create a variable which is hours and it's equal to now with the function now we are going to use the get hours. Okay, and hours and we are going to use the function hours and then we are going to terminate it. Similarly, we need to find out the minutes is equal to and then again you using the now dot get minutes and then to complete its body by using the bracket and then again we need a seconds is equal to and then we need to use the now and then here we will be using the get seconds. So finally if we are able to fetch the hours, minutes and seconds if we directly set these values to the elements or right, which we can do it by the way then you can see here our hours element so if I use the hours element dot and we are going to update its text content so if I use it and equals to hours which is our hours variable and similarly for the minutes one which is our minutes element dot text content is equal to and here we'll be using the minutes semicolon to terminate it and then we are going to use the seconds element dot text content is equal to seconds if i terminate it and if i save it then you can see inside the browser the things are actually working means the code is actually working right now the time is 12 21 am so it's actually showing the 21 am but we want our project to display the timer in a form of two digits so for that we need to calculate and add some logic so i'm going to use the ternary operator for that to display the time in two digits right now you can see it's actually displaying the two digits the only for that because right now this is actually 21 minute 26 second but if you see the second is completed like 60 and then when it's turn back to 0, 1, 2, then it also going to display in the single digit. So for that we need to calculate the hours. We need to modify the hours variable value. Okay, so first we need to modify the value of this hours variable on the basis of the certain condition. So first I'm going to type here hours is equal to and then here I'm again going to type the hours value. So if it is smaller than 10, which is a two digit value, smaller than 10, then I'm going to here use the question mark sign. Then this is for the ternary operator. If it is smaller than, then we are going to append the zero inside of it. Like this zero will be added to our hours variable. This particular hours will be first compared with this value 10. If it is smaller than 10, then this block will be executed. It means this particular code will be executed, which will be zero added to the hours variable. And then this entire value will be initialized to this hour variable. Okay. And after that, if it is not happen, then it's going to display the value of the hours. Okay. If it is not smaller than 10, then this particular hours variable value will be initialized to the hours. I think this is very clear to you. This is the best thing I can do. And uh, Similarly, we need to do this same with the use of minutes and also with the seconds. So here inside of this, I will be using for the minutes. If minutes is smaller than 10, like this similar one, then 10 will be added. If it is minutes is smaller than the value of 10, then zero will be added to the minutes. Again, I'm repeating so that you can easily remember the logic. If it is not the case, if minutes is not smaller than 10, then this particular value will be executed. Then it's going to initialize the minutes. 
okay similarly it is going to happen in case of seconds as well so if it is seconds if seconds is smaller than 10 then it's going to append the 0 to the seconds if it is not a case if second is not smaller than 10 then this will be not be executed then here this second variable value will be initialized to the seconds variable so that's marks the completion of the code if i control save it then you can see everything is now appearing two digits you can see right now we are actually having 12 56 am so right now you can see 56 and it's displaying these seconds so 56 minutes then there is a 12 so it's actually going to be 00, zero. okay and similarly for this one you can see here 57 minutes this is also having 57 minutes. so that's marks the completion of the code for this project which is our digital clock application so if you are actually enjoying the course and if you like my videos then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to actually enhance the quality of my course also it will help me to enhance the quality of my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the expense tracker application so let me show you the first application that we are going to build in this particular lecture so this is the final application that we are going to build in this whole lecture so you can see we have this heading expense tracker then we have this label which actually display the total expenses then we have a button so if you click on this add expense button then you can see we have this alert message box appearing so instead of that first we need to add the enter expense description so if i enter here like uh, drinks and if i hit like ok and then we need to add the amount this is our next alert box that has the enter expense amount so instead of that we need to add the like amount of the expense so if i enter here 10 then you can see we have this list and also our total expense variable value is also changed means this is actually a variable means this particular label value is updated and we also have this nice white list that has this close button so if i click on this close then you can see the expense list is actually removed and if i again click on that and then we can add here like food if i hit ok then we need to add the amount that is 50 dollar and if i again enter here like uh, fruits we have spent some time on fruits and then we need to add the another which is like 40 dollar or again there is 70 just the random value i want to add then you can see this list is actually maintained so once this expense you can calculate it how much like groceries you have built you can track that so this is the application we are going to build the main idea is to actually learn how to build this ui and also add this list functionality and later on in this course we will also build some advanced features of this application as well so our first step is to start with the html part of the project so here you can see inside of the visual studio code i have created three files the first is the index.html the second is the style.css the third one is the script.js file so let me click on this explorer button so that we have this nice work area and also i'm going to minimize it and i'm going to select my chrome browser and just i'm going to launch the application which is the html part this one so if i click on go live then we will definitely see a new tab so it's actually starting here and uh, so you can see this is our application is now working so if i enter here like h1 element expense if i save then we will see the expense tracker so I, I can show you the output while typing the html and css code as well because this is our best way to actually display the working line of the code okay so now the first thing is we need to create the expense tracker container that has all the elements so all of this is actually wrapped inside the expense tracker container so we want to do that thing first and then if i hit a tab key then we get uh, actually i have to specify here a dot as well so if i press a tab key then we can see we get the expense tracker but we didn't get the class name so i'm just going to cut it i didn't take the class name so now this is our class expense tracker so instead of that i have to add first the another div so i'm going to type it here expense like header so I enter now at this point of time the emit plugin works perfectly 
So instead of the first, just grab this H1 element and I'm going to put it inside the and let's change this to H2. Okay, and also it's closing tag. So now it's become a little bit small. That is because the we have used here a H2 heading. So our next step is we need to place the button because these all are actually appearing in the single row or I can say that the line. So here we will be using the button. Then we need to specify the class to this button which will be fetched inside the HTML and also used for the styling the CSS part. And then I actually named the class as exp add expense ptn. And inside of that we need to add the text add expense. Okay, so now this is actually done. After that we need to add a another which is to actually display this list. So for that we need to add an empty div element. So I'm again here typing the expense. And then I will be adding an expense list. So this will remain the empty because this will be used to display the list. And then we need to add this label or I can say that the h3 tag or this will actually display the like total expense amount. Okay, so for that again we need to create the another div of the class total expense on total and if I press a tab key then we get this div inside of that I will be using the h3 element so it's going to have a heading total expense and then this is going to like dollar zero which will display the result zero at the initial part all right so that is for the html elements part we have added this main container so let me first actually do what actually this is ended like here this is div so this div is actually closing at the end so i have done a one mistake because everyone everything will be inside inside the because this will be the parent so let me first indent it properly okay so everything is indented all these three divs are actually child of this expense tracker and then all of them has two elements this one has one this one is empty element because it doesn't have we are going to display the list manually by using the javascript code if i control save it then the output will remain the same so our next step is to add the css part to this expense tracker application so for css part we have to use the style.css file in order to style these elements of the HTML. So the first thing is we need to style the body tag. So inside of the body, I'm going to apply the background color. So background color is going to be like hashtag F2, F2 and F2, which is my favorite like light gray color. And then I need to apply the font family. So the font family is going to like Gil Sans. So I'm going to use different font at this point of time. So you can see this is our expense tracker font. Okay and it is actually slightly different than this font this one actually using the arial sensory but i have actually used here a different font just to make the application little different in terms of the font the functionality will remain the same and after that we need to style the expense tracker class so this is our class so i'm going to copy this and then i will be here using the dot and then pasting the class name and then i have actually specify here two curly brackets opening and closing curly brackets inside of the block of the expense tracker we are going to write our css code so the first thing is i am actually using here max width property so max width and then it's going to like 500 pixel okay if i control save then nothing will change because we have to add the margin property as well so margin is zero and then from top and bottom is going to zero and then i have to specify the from the left and right is going to auto if i control save it then you can see it's slightly moved if i actually increase the size then it is actually at the center of the screen okay i'm going to actually show this okay so now this is what margin property does and after that we need to add the padding so padding is going to like 20 pixel okay and then i have to add the font family so in font family again this is one which is lucida i actually going to use this font family all right and then i will be using here the border property 
so the border is going to like one pixel border solid border okay and then i have to specify the color so color is going to like ccc which is a little gray color so you can see we have this nice border is coming out to the expense tracker okay and after that we need to add the border radius property right now the border corners are very thick like a pointed one so we want a rounded border so for that we are actually using a border radius property of 5 pixel and after that i'm going to specify the background color so the background color is actually i'm using here a this beig which is beige this particular color okay so this is for the expense tracker class the next thing that we want to style is the expense header so i'm going to copy this because inside of that we need to actually display these expense tracker heading which is h2 element and also this button in the same line so for that we need to first actually use the expense header so right now this can be done with the use of the flex because these two are actually the child of this expense header so for applying the flex we need a header which is i can say that the parent and then we need a child so there should be a parent child relationship then we can use the flex properly so that is why i'm going to use this so i'm going to copy this area i think i have didn't copy this property again i'm going to specify a dot and then instead of expense tracker i'm going to paste it here expense header then the body of this expense header so instead of that first i will be using the property called display flex so display is going to be flex and after that i will be here using the justify content which is going to be like space between not round it's going to like space between if i do that then you can see both of these elements now appearing at this single row right now you can see the button style is actually changed looks like a little bit square but we are, we are going to style just a moment but first we have to complete this expense header and after that i need to apply another property which is align items is going to be center as well so if i do that then you can see the button is actually taken up its normal state or you can say the normal style okay then we have to add another property here which is for margin from bottom is going to be like 20 pixel okay so this is for the expense header so the next step is to style this button so again i am actually going to paste it here dot then expense header and then we need to add here a button or i can just simply use the class of the button because we have specified the class of the button you can use that as well or i can select the multiple click selector because i can use the expense tracker and then inside of that we can target the button as well so we can use that approach as well but i am actually using the class name of the button so inside of the button from top and left i'm going to use the padding property which is a shorthand property so this is going to be like 10 pixel and then i also need to apply the padding from the left and right which is going to be like 20 pixels if i do that and if i save then you can see if i increase the padding to like 30 then you can see from left and right the padding is actually increased from top and bottom i want to just play the padding as 7 pixel or i can just stick with the 10 pixel it's totally up to you how you want to style your button all right and then after that i need to specify the background color which is a nice greenish color so it's going to like 4 c a f 5 0 so here not a x it's actually a c you can see this is the button now we have to change the color so color is going to like hashtag fff which is for the white and then we need to remove the border so border is going to be like none and then i need to increase the font size so font size is going to like 16 pixel and then i need to increase the font weight so font weight is going to like 600 if i save it then you can see button is actually changed the style of the button then i have actually used the text transform which is going to be like uppercase and then the another property i will be using here a border radius property which is going to be like 5 pixel if i control save it then you can see the button edges is actually become rounded means the corner of the button becomes round and then we have the text transform which actually changed the like uh, characters or i can say that the text of the button to uppercase letters okay and the last property or i can say that the second last property is going to be the cursor pointer and then for the hover animation we are going to here use the transition so transition we are going to target the background color background and then we are going to use the color 
so color is going to lie 0 0.3 second and it's going to lie ease if i do that then you can see there's a nice effect is going on okay so that marks the completion of the code for the add xmas btn you can see that the color of the button is not changed that is because the property here is actually the counter reset we want to change it it is actually a color so i save it then we can see we have this nice add expense white color text okay so the next step is we need to add the css for this total expense one the another one that we have to write the css is the expense list so we are going to write the expense list css and also its item you can see this is a list and all of its item and all of this button CSS we are going to write once we complete the JavaScript part. Okay, so right now I'm going to provide the CSS code for this total expense so that it can actually display in the right side of the container. So to do that, first I'm going to copy the class name of the total expenses and coming back to the CSS part, here I will be using the dot and adding the total expenses. So inside of that, I just need to do text alignment. So it's going to like text alignment. So I'm going to change the property to write. Once I do that, you can see the text is now appearing at the center. Also, I can actually increase the font weight. So it's a heading tag, so I can increase the font weight to like 600. Or it doesn't actually, so this property doesn't require because it's already bold because we have used here a element which is called H3. So if we use here a like paragraph element, because before that I have used the paragraph element but for this tutorial creation I have used here the h3 tag so it's already bold so we don't need to specify here the font weight property or like anything else so okay so that is for the CSS part of this expense tracker application so our next step is to actually start the JavaScript part of this expense tracker application So now we are going to start with the javascript part of the project. So inside of the script.js file, first we need to create the three variables which will be used to fetch the ids of the element. But inside our index.html we didn't specify the id selector, we specify here class selector. So we are going to use the query selector to fetch the these elements so that we can bind these ui elements inside our javascript. And also you can see this h3 element doesn't have a class so we are going to use the selector to select this element inside the script.js file so let me first type the first line of the code so first is actually our add expense button and this will be going to initialize the value as document dot query selector so inside of the query selector we need to specify the class name so the class name is our button class name is add expense btn so we're going to use it with the use of dot because it's a class selector and also i'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the code in the proper line now you can see it's giving us the error the reason for that we need to specify this inside the double quotes or either in the single quotes so once we do that we are successfully able to fetch the button inside the javascript and similarly we need to create two more lines of the code so i'm going to simply copy this and paste it two more times then this will be our expense list okay and inside of this expense list i'm going to fetch the class name of the expense list so i'm going to copy it and again i'm going to paste it here and then the last and then the third one we need is our total expense to display the expense amount. So it's going to be total expenses. And inside of that, I'm going to use the class name total expense. I'm going to copy this class name coming back to the script.js file. And I'm going to paste it here. And also I'm going to press a space here because we are going to select the h3 element. So this is our h3 element. We need to display the amount inside of this h3 so that is the reason i have specified here h3 as well so that is for the fetching of the elements inside the javascript now after doing this we need to create two variables so the first is actually like an array which is an empty array which is actually going to hold all of these inside array because every list item will be act as an array element so we are going to traverse the array and then display it in the form of ui 
and then we need a total to display the total amount which is the total expense okay so we need to create these two variables so again i'm going to open our own project means going to click on the tab where our project is expense tracker and this is the final product that we want to build so the first thing is i'm going to here use the let keyword so expenses and is equal to or i'm going to specify here s for the plural because it is for the expenses and then i'm going to use the square brackets which is for the array okay and then i need to create another variable which is for the total and it is going to equal to like zero because right now the total is zero then we need to create some functions so i'm going to first create all the functions like uh, just the name of the function then we are going to code inside the function so the first thing is render expenses so this is the first function that we need okay and then we need a another function function which is for the add expense so this will be used to add the expense in the list so this will be the function name and the body and the another function is we need is to delete the expenses so it's going to like function then we need to specify the name of the function we need to specify its body so these are the three functions that will be used now this particular one is actually used to create this ui and inside of the ui we this function add expense will be used to put the data the data main is actually added by this function and then this will be used to give the functionality to delete the data so this function will be called so first we are going to start the coding inside this render expense function because also for creating this ui elements we also need to provide the css code as well so i'm going to just simply make a room here by entering some spaces and then inside of this function we need to create the element which is called let or i can say that the variable of the element which is let html is equal to empty so we need to create a div and inside of that div which will be acts as a container means that main div and then inside of that we need to create the three more elements the this is actually a div which is used for the description of the item then the um, amount item and then the button so we are going to create four html elements by using the javascript code okay so all of this will be done inside the for each method which is used for the looping purpose okay so first we are going to use the expenses so expenses dot which is our array so we are going to loop it by using the for each so inside of this for loop we are going to provide the first as an expense okay expense and then we need to here provide the arrow syntax by using the fat arrow and then we are going to open its curly brackets and after that we need to terminate it so this is what we are going to do with the expense i'm also going to provide air spaces so that it looks more clear and meaningful and then inside of that we are going to use initialize this html element which is our variable right now so this is going to like html and it's going to have a short syntax property i'm going to use it which is actually used to initialize and also adding the new elements okay then i'm going to use here a template string so please pay more attention to this particular code otherwise things will become more difficult if you didn't watch it properly so i'm going to take it into multiple lines and then i will be here specifying a terminator at the end of this because it's a multi-line string with the use of template tree we can do that and inside of that i will be using here a div tag so i'm going to type the whole code which is div and it's going to have a class selector is equal to the class selector that i'm going to give here like expense expense and it's going to like item so this will be the class name for the main root element which is like a root element which means that the main parent element of these three items these three elements sorry not items then i'm going to close the div tag by entering the division and instead of that we need another div so i'm going to copy this because we need a div and this will be closed here by div and instead of that i'm going to change its class name to expense item and hyphen is going to like description description and then this is going to hold a value but right now all of the values actually 
the value that it will display is coming from this add expense method but we didn't specify any code inside the add expense method so right now i am going to leave it as empty because we also going to specify the css code then i'm going to copy this into one more time for this amount one so i'm going to come in back to the next line and expense item this is going to be our amount so this is our amount and again this is going to get the value from this add expense function but we are going to first create the ui or you can do that just simply add the add expense but i'm going to follow the easiest approach so that you can easily understand what's actually going on inside this expense tracker application then we need a button so again this button is for this one which is used to remove the expense item from the list so again i'm going to type it a button then it's going to have a class selector so the class selector is going to like uh, delete delete expense button which is like our btn and it's going to hold a value because we are going to provide this cross icon so for that we are going to use here a property means a short property which is called times where it's a cross and then we are going to terminate it and then we need to close the button tag as well right now if we run this application if i control save it then you will see nothing is changed these tags doesn't reflect back inside the expense tracker project the reason for that we need to update the inner html of this class list which is our this class list expense list so we are going to do that where is our javascript this is the javascript code so after the end of these for each method okay so inside of that first we need to use the expense list dot and we are going to update its inner html is equal to html and then we need to provide a semicolon the semicolon is totally optional but for here you need to provide the semicolon and also inside of that because this is actually a multi-line statement okay and if i save it then you will see again nothing is happening the reason for that because we didn't specify the code inside the add expense but if we add it here then the when we click on the add expense the alert or i can say that the prompt because alert is the wrong one the prompt is the correct so what this line of code does is actually going to update the html part but right now it doesn't going to update it because when you click on the button there is no listener is attached and there is no prompt is appearing so that is the reason it's actually not going to do anything and after that we need to add the another line of code which is total expense which is actually used to update the value so here i'm going to use the total expenses dot inner html and it is going to use the so again i'm going to use here a template string the template string it is going to like total expense total expenses and a colon and then i'm going to press here a dollar now after the end of the dollar we need to get the values of the total variable which is this variable we, this is a actually a global variable it will be used inside of this function and also inside of this add expense function to update its value okay so that's not the completion of the code for this render expense function now our next step is to add the add expenses so now we have added the ui code the only thing when we add the add expense functionality we are going to see the like this expense list inside the application okay so coming back to our add expense function so the first thing is we need to create the variable so it is going to be like of const and this is going for the description so description is equal to and description is going to be first we need to use a prompt so it is actually a string so i'm directly using the prompt and here i am going to type the enter expense description okay and then this will be prompted to enter the description and after that we need to add here another const amount this will be used to enter the enter the amount the amount can be in a decimal value means the point value so that is why i have used here a float to actually accept the decimal values as well means the point values float values and after that we need to check for the condition whether the two 
elements are entered properly if one of the element is not entered then we don't allow the user to enter the list means enter the expense list so i'm going to type it here if then i'm going to start its brackets and also its braces so inside of the if condition first i'm going to type it if, like in description if it is description and amount so if it is then we are going to create here a variable inside the if block which is our const expense is equal to and this is going to have an description so i'm going to create the object which is like description and then i'm going to initialize it with the description value okay so this is actually the property and the value it will be hold from the this variable description then i need to specify a comma because it is an object and then again i'm going to specify the amount as a property and then i'm going to specify the value of this that is coming from the amount remember at the last one doesn't provide the comma and then we need to terminate this object by providing the terminator so after that when you once we get the value then we need to use the push function remember we have these expenses so inside of the array we can use the push function to push the data inside the array so that is the reason after the inside the, after the end of the object you should need to remember inside the if block here we need to type the expense this dot push method so push and what we want to push we want to push an object so this will be a key value pair object and then inside the total variable which is our this total variable we are going to update the value of this total variable also so this is like our total and then i am going to add here like a short syntaxing for initializing and also addition then i am going to update its value like amount so like whatever the total amount is the amount is actually added by the user will be the total amount of the expense okay so I suppose if user enter the amount like five dollar then that will be access a total expense amount and then again if the user added then that will be added then five means i want to say that like if the user first time enter the amount five dollar then that five dollar will be initialized to the total variable then that will be displayed here as a five dollar and after that in the second time when the user enter the second expense then suppose on that time user enter the 10 then then 10 will be added to this total variable so that is why here i have added the amount because it's going to update the total variable value every time when the user enters a new expense okay and then after that inside the if condition then we need to call the render expense function so we already created the code inside the render expense function so once we call the render expense function and then we can use it so if i control save it and if i click on the add expense then you can see again nothing is happening the reason for that we need to add the listener to this button okay so for that i'm going to add outside of the function so here i will be writing the code like add expense btn remember we have created the variable at the top which is add expense btn which is actually fetching the class selector of the add expense button so we already bind the ui element with the javascript with these three lines of code now we are going to set the listener to this button so when we click on it then we get the prompt okay so for that btn dot add event listener so we are going to add the event listener so the event listener that we want to add is the click event so we need to specify here click and then we need to specify the comma and then we need to call the function which is add expense function as a callback so once i save it then if i click on this button then you can see now the prompt is appearing so if i enter the prompt like uh, our cola and if i enter here okay then you can see the next prompt is now appeared so there is a problem so actually i have here actually added a parse float but there is a one problem i need to put this parse float inside the brackets so here i didn't use the prompt so that is the reason it doesn't actually work with the code because the amount is not added and the condition of the if is not executed so here i also need to specify the prompt so again i need to add here one more brackets and inside of the bracket i need to call here a 
under time prompt. So once I do that, and if I refresh it by pressing the control S, if I click on the button, and then again I'm here enter the cola and press OK. Then we need to add the price, which is like fifty dollar, or you can add it randomly whatever you want. So if I click OK, then you can see the UI is not updated, which is expected because right now inside of this HTML which we are actually generating with the JavaScript code dynamically, we need to add the variable values that is total expense or description that we are getting from the this object which is our expense object because this object is created inside the expense and we have used this object here inside of this for each because what for each will traverse and that is what we actually want to create so with the use of this expense object then we need to specify the value because we are actually having a template string okay this is a template string and instead of that we are generating the html code dynamically so we need to provide the here curly brackets and then we need to specify here a dollar sign and instead of this dollar sign i need to call the expense this is the expense and then we need to call the expense dot and then we will call here a description we are directly referring to the this property which is description so if i click on it then you can see this is our description and similarly if i zoom out a little bit more so that you can see the code more clearly and similarly again we need to provide the amount as well so again i am here going to type the dollar and then curly brackets and instead of this curly bracket i need to provide the expense not svg it's like expense expense and then dot and then we need to use the amount and also for displaying the dollar in the amount like in front of you can see the dollar so for that dollar we need to again provide here a dollar okay so this will be used to display the dollar sign in front of the amount then the button will remain same it's going to have a cross and also there is a one problem you can see here inside the total expense i have used here a inner html but this total expense is actually an h3 element so we need to update its actually a text property we don't need to update its inner html so here i have used a wrong property we need to update the inner text again it's coming the inner html that is because it is the most used one that is why it's coming at the front inside the suggestion so i'm going to here use the inner text okay so if i control save it and uh, still there is a one problem the problem is that we are actually calling the push function inside the object what i actually we did you can see there is a problem here we are actually using the push function inside the object so if i try to run this and control save it if i click on to the prompt and again if i here specify the properties like cola if i hit ok and then 50 dollar price then you can see nothing is working and the reason for that if i actually open the inspect element by pressing the f12 key so you can see now we are actually here getting the console so inside the console you can see there is a one error is shown type error expense dot push is not a function and at html button dot add expense so script dot js 44 so inside the 44 line there is a one problem you can see here expense dot push is not a function so that is a problem because here we are getting the problem so we are actually need to push the data inside the expenses there is only a one character which is s and actually i have pushed the data inside the object so that is the reason if i press here s means we need to change this value to s which is expenses now if i save it and if i click on this add expense button then you can see the prompt is appearing so here i will be writing the cola and if i click ok and then if i enter the price so you can see now the value is appearing so let me close this console window by clicking on this close button you can see we are getting our like expense tracker and you can see the cola and then we have this 50 value also this button so if i click on it then nothing will happen because right now we didn't specify the code inside the delete expense also this total expense variable actually having only a dollar sign the reason for that because we need to here specify the variable value so again i need to here use the dollar symbol and then we need to call here a total so if i save it and again click on the add expense again i am going to enter here milk and then here if i enter 50 dollar and press enter then you can see the total expense is appearing 50 dollar and then we have this milk and this this 50 
and also this close button right now if i click on this close button nothing is happening again if i click on it and we have like powder powder and if i click here okay and if i enter like 90 dollar hit again then you can see we are getting our next list element so we are successfully able to render the expenses in the form of list and also we are able to add the expenses inside the list okay so we have used these two functions and we have set the listener to the button so now it's time to specify the css code to these three elements okay so we need to open our style.css file and here inside of that we need to add the css code so the first code is we need to actually style the expense list so our expense list class is like this this is the name of our expense list so we need first to style this and here i will be pasting the expense list and inside of this expense list i'm going to use the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to like 20 pixel okay and then we need to style the expense item which is the main thing okay so the expense item we have specified the class name inside the this code so i'm going to copy this here expense item coming back to the css part and control v to paste the code and inside of the expense item i'm going to first use the display property which is like display flex and if i use here justify content and justify content is going to like space between so if i control save it then you can see the item is now appearing in a form of single row and then we need to use the align item property align item is going to be like center if i control save it then it's going to center the things then we need to specify the background color so the background color i will be using here f9 f9 and f9 and you can see we're getting this white color then need to specify the padding so the padding is going to like 10 pixel and after that i will be specifying the border radius so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel control save it then you can see this is the item and then we need to specify the margin bottom so every time each item will be displayed differently so if i use margin bottom 10 pixel then you can see now we are able to get the list in a much better way you can see we have these buttons so we need to specify the code for the buttons as well so before the styling the button i'm going to use the expense like where is our javascript expense item description we need to provide the style code for this one as also and coming back to here and i'm going to increase its font weight so it's like font weight property and it's going to like bold okay and similarly i'm going to copy this again one more time so this one is for the amount okay and this is also bold you can see these two now appearing in a bold more bolder okay and then we need to specify the code for the button so again coming back to the script.js file this is our delete button class so i'm going to copy this class coming back to the style.css press the dot key and then control v to paste the code and instead of that i'm going to use the first background color so the background color is actually we are going to use here hashtag f44 which is for the red red means red color not red red it's a red color and then we need to specify the color as white so it's like hashtag fff also need to specify the hash not hashtag it's a hash character and then need to specify the border to none control save it and you can see then we need to increase the border radius so border radius is going to like 50 percent then it will become a round round like structure when it has become a rounded and then we need to use here uh, another property which is like width so we need to specify the width to 30 pixel and also the height is 30 pixel so it looks like a perfect circle you can see now it's looking more beautiful i can say that or if i increase the font size to 16 pixel so it will increase the font size and also font weight font weight and it's going to like bold so it's now become appearing more crisp and the last property is actually we need to change the cursor pointer so when we hover over it then it will become changes the cursor to pointer we are successfully able to fetch the list means we are able to add the expense and render the expenses so the last step is we need to add the code to delete the expense 
so right now you can see we can add the more elements like uh, sugar okay and if i enter here and enter like 50 dollars and if i enter then you can see we are able to add it but there is no way we can delete it although we are getting this pointer style cursor so we need to add the code inside this delete expense function actually you must guys wondering why i sometimes call this function as method because in object oriented we call the function as method and in normal code without the object oriented we call the functions as functions so that is why sometimes i interchangeably use these terms but it is actually a function yes so let's start implementing the code inside the delete function now this code is little bit tricky because we have to add some more code because we also need to attach the listener to this button and also add the code to delete the this particular list from the html element okay so to do that this is actually a little bit tricky stuff so don't worry i'm going to explain the code so the first thing is going to accept a one parameter which is of type index we're actually going to pass an event okay according to that event it's going to delete the list from the expand then we need to use here a short syntaxing to actually minus so it's actually used to minus the things and then here we will be using the expenses array inside of the array i'm going to pass the index which is our event okay whichever we want because everything is actually stored in the form of indexing starting from zero or to the line because this element is stored inside the array in a index as zero this will be stored in one this will be stored in two so that is why we are actually passing the index here to delete the element inside the array amount and then after that we are calling here uh, expenses dot splice method so you can see you can hover over it so it removes elements from an array and if necessary inserts a new element in their place returning the deleted element so splice method does what it actually removes the element from an array so you can hover over it to actually read the short description which is studio provided so it actually removes the element from the array also it's going to return the deleted element and inserts a new element in their place so that is why so it's whatever index we will provide it here it's going to delete that element and also going to insert a new element okay and then we need to call here a render expense function because after deleting the element we also need to render the ui element that is the reason and by doing this once i control save it you can see the code is actually changed because once we refresh the javascript code it's actually re-render the javascript page means this re-render the web page so if i click it here and if i use here a cola and if i click ok and enter here a 60 dollar press enter if i click on this then you can see nothing is working the reason for that because we need to add the listener to this particular button so to do that let's add it and wrap this lecture quickly so i am going to add here expense list dot add event listener so the event listener that we want to add is actually our click event so we need to specify the click event here by adding the like uh, click click event and then we need to specify a comma and inside of that we need to specify the function and then we need to pass here an event okay and then this is the function event we have passed and actually add event listener uh, so we have actually opened the brackets in the wrong form we need to open the brackets here that is why it's actually giving us the error so inside of that we need to actually check for the condition so we are going to do it here if because adding the event listener we need to add the listener to the button not when we click on these items if we click on the item it is also going to delete the button so that is the reason we need to add the condition here so we are going to use here uh, if event dot target dot class list so we are targeting the element class list dot contains contains and instead of that i will be using here in double quotes which is our delete which is the class name that we have specified so i'm going to copy it so it will be saves a little bit of our time so this is our delete button so I'm going to come in back bottom of the code project and if I paste it here. So what we are actually we are actually targeting the event dot target dot class list dot contains if it contains if class list whatever the listener we are adding if it contains a delete expense button okay then we are going to open the body of the if condition and then we'll be writing the code. We are actually using here a const variable 
const index and instead of the index we are going to use here array dot from function and then inside of that we are going to use here a event dot target dot our parent node parent node dot parent node so parent node again we are calling the parent node and dot children children and we are using here a index of okay guys so this is the code we have actually used here and inside of this index of i'm going to just take it to the next line index of and then need to specify the code inside of that by using the event dot target dot parent node then we need to pass this index to the our delete expense function as a parameter but our index node we are actually calculating okay so once i do that and if i refresh it then if i click on the add expense button if i enter here a like food hit ok and i enter here like 50 then if i click on this like the arrow button then you can see the item is removed so this particular line of code does what is actually creating the that index we actually want to delete it okay now i'm going to explain this code in a more detail because right now this will be the most confusing thing for this entire project i know that so the first time i'm going to start with this delete expense one so what this particular line of code does it's going to actually detect the amount from the expense according to the index of the item the item which is deleted and this flies will does it's actually going to delete the item and also returns the new item means it's going to return the deleted item and in place of the deleted item it's going to place the new item now these two are easiest one to understand i think now the main thing is this is where we have added the listener the first is the if condition if event.target.classlist.contains delete expense button so this basically used to check whether the clicked button which is the click event function when we click on the button suppose if i add here a like so suppose here if i add here a like a fruit okay that's okay and then enter here 50 then if we click on this then this is having a class called delete expense button so this particular if condition checks for that condition if the click item is even contains the delete expense button class if it is a delete button expense class which is true in case if i click on it then it's going to remove the item so then this code will be executed so we need to main focus is this particular code so first we have created an index constant which is pretty much easy one then we have here used the two functions of the array which is array dot from and index of so this particular line of code does what it's going to return the parent node of the list element okay whatever the element is clicked right now at this point of time this element will be clicked so it's going to return the parent node and then the this particular one will actually return the parent node of the class list so it's going to determine that now if this will have the array of the child elements so we need to find the index of the child elements because which is provided by this particular one because you can see that parent node dot children so it will have the collection of the children elements and that will be passed to the index of so we need to calculate the index of all the, the child elements so that will be calculated with the use of this index of function and later on once we calculated we are going to pass the index to this delete expense function to delete the node so i think you get the complete idea how this code is working if you want more in-depth explanation you can google it because at this particular tutorial i can do this is the best that i can explain it so if you want to learn more you can just simply go and google it because this is a code that will actually you can actually learn by just practicing more javascript so that's marks the completion of the video lecture of this expense tracker application if you like this lecture then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to improve my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see in the next lecture thank you welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to build the popover application so let me show you the application that we are going to build in this lecture so you can see this is the application that we are going to build so when i click on this button 
So you can see this is a poke over appears. So if I click on this close button, then you can see it's actually close the pop over. So this is a small application that we are going to build in this particular lecture. So the first step is we need to start with the HTML part of the project. So here you can see I have already created the three files inside the Visual Studio code. Okay. And I also launched my application in my browser. So you can see right now this application has the blank screen. So if I add here an h1 element and if I type here pop over and if I control save it then you can see the h1 heading tag is now appear inside the browser screen. Okay so I'm going to just change my viewport to little bit so again you can see the output as well as the input when I type the code inside the Visual Studio code. So our first step is to actually add a class that has a pop over class means the div element and inside of that we are going to place the other elements okay so i'm going to remove this h1 heading control save it and if i just here you can see the because of the live plugin the output is actually removed so i need a class of button class so here i will be using the button and inside of the class i'm going to type the name of the class as b t n this is the first element that will be displayed when I click on the button. So when I control save it then you can see this is the button. So this class attribute is used to actually style the element of the button and then we need an id selector. id selector and instead of that I am going to place the name of the id is my button and after that we need the other elements which is our pop over element which is going to be of type div over and if I press tab key then you can see we have a div tag that has a class pop over and inside of that I also going to specify the id so the id name is my pop over and inside of this particular pop over div I am going to specify the another div so I am going to type it and as specify the class name as pop over div or I can say the pop over inner that will be fine and then inside of that i'm going to specify the h3 element and then name this as my pop over okay and then i will be using the paragraph element so i'm pressing the enter key and this will be our paragraph element now here i will be writing this in some random text okay that is used here this is just a random text I have typed and then we need a, another button to actually close the pop-up. So for that I am using here a button and then the class of the button is button which is also type ptn and then we need to specify the id so the id is going to be like close btn so this one is close the text of the button is going to be close so if I control save it then you can see it's now appearing but we are going to hide it with the use of css and also the style of both buttons should be same so we are going to use the same style for both of these two buttons okay so that marks the completion of the code for the html for this popover project so the next step is to add the css part to this project So now let's get start with the CSS part of the project. So for that we need to use the style.css file. So here you can see our style.css file is already empty and I have already linked my CSS file with the use of this link tag. And also I have linked my JavaScript file which is by using with the script tag when I was creating the template code of the project. Okay so inside of the style.css file first I am going to provide the style for the body element to actually center the content of this particular project right now you can see it's actually appearing at the left side of the screen so first we are going to use here a body element and inside of the body i'm going to use the display property flex so i'm going to use here a display flex so if you can see here right now the all elements is now appearing at the screen means at the corner of the screen so if i just here put the code and then i will be showing the output as well so i'm going to make it here a little bit and just make it as a square portion okay in the form of square the window of the browser 
and then I'm here using the justify content as center. If I do that, then you can see the content of the screen is actually at the center, means the element is now appearing at the center of the screen oh, inside the browser. Then I'm using here a margin property, which is oh, actually oh, for a margin top. It's going to be like 50 pixel, the margin top property. And then we need to style the pop over class. So I'm going to also increase its height. So we're going to type here pop over. Then starting the body of the element and inside of that I will be using here a display is going to be like none. So if I do that then you can see we are actually able to hide the content of the popover. That is what we actually want because when we click on it we want to display the popover. Okay. And after that we are going to use here a position property. So the position is going to be like 250 pixel. So right now you cannot see, so I'm going to simply remove the display property because first we are going to set the style to this popover and after that we are going to actually change its display property to none. Okay, this is just I showed you for the demonstration purpose. We are going to use the display property once we complete the styling of this popover and also its button, its paragraph element and also its button. Okay, so coming back to our popover block of the code so here first i will be specifying the width so i actually use here a position there is a i have used here a wrong property here a position is going to be like absolute once i did that, did that then you can see they are now appearing like in a columnar structure means one after the other okay once i did the position absolute property now it's time to add the width property so width property is going to be like 250 pixel and then I will be adding here a padding property. So padding is going to be like 10 pixel. And after that, I need to apply here a border radius property because we want our pop-up to be look like this. That will be showing the different browser, like a rounded one. So that is why we are going to here use the border radius property of 10 pixel. And after that, we need to use here a background color. So background is going to be like of white because we are going to use here a box shadow property. That is the reason. So box shadow and inside of the box shadow, I'm going to use here a first uh, 0, then 0, then 10 pixel and then RGBA because I have used box shadow in this way like many times in this particular course. So 0, then uh, for 0 again, 0 and for this one is also let me first remove it again, type it. It's not taking up the shortcuts. RGB then 0, 0, 0 and then for alpha it's going to like 0 0.2 okay once I did that then you can see there is a nice okay and after that we need to add a property of Z index so it's going to like it's not going to pop up immediately because here I have not specified the semicolon so then I using a Z index property so Z index is going to be 1 because it's going to be top of the button it's going to be laying at the top of the button okay and after that we need to use the font size property so the size of the font is going to be 16 pixel then there is a line height it's this property is optional if you want to increase the height of the line this is a new property i have introduced for the paragraph element so it's going to be like 1.5 which actually increase the height of the line and the last property that we want is the text align property so we're going to align the text at the center so you can see now our pop over is all elements is now appearing at the center including the button. Now our next element to style it is the button. So we are going to provide the style for this close button and also for the button that is actually visible behind this pop up screen. This pop up I can say that okay. So first where we will be going to type the btn. So it's going to immediately apply the style for both of the button because the class of the both button our close button and click me button is actually the same okay so once i type the code it's going to immediately take the effect on both of the buttons so the first property is we need is the display property so the display is going to be like inline block and uh, next property i am going to use is the padding property so from both sides we want a padding of 10 pixel and then we need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel and then we are going to use the background color property so background color is going to be like 3f and then we need 51bf so this will be the background color 
for the button and then we need the color property so color is going to like hashtag FFF and then after that we need the font size is going to like 16 pixel so after specifying the font size property the next property is actually our cursor pointer property so when we hover over the button then we can see there is a nice cursor is appearing on the button and then we need the button hover effect so for that i'm going to go again type the code and just leaving the background color and also removing the rest of the code and then i'm going to here use the hover effect and also i'm going to here change the color code to 303f and then our color is 9f so this is the color we want so when i hover over it then it's become little bit more darker now the style of the button and button is also done pop over and the body element so it's time to actually make this pop over display to hidden so i'm going to type it here display is going to be like none okay so it's going to be like none so when i click it then you can see now only element that is visible to our screen is the button so that's not the completion of the code for the css part so our next step is to add the javascript part to this pop over project now it's time to add the javascript part to this particular pop over project so for that we need to use the javascript file which is our script.js so i have already linked this file to our index.html file so the first thing is we need to actually get the reference to the button which is our this click me button okay so the id of this button is actually my button so i'm going to copy the id and inside of the script.js file i'm going to first create a variable of type constant so here i'll be typing the const keyword and then this is our my ptn is going to equal to document dot get element by id and inside of the id i'm going to place the id of the button which is my by tn okay and after doing that i'm going to again create the variable which is the const you can say here a const my pop over my pop over is equal to document dot so i'm going to copy this line of code to save a little bit of time and here inside of this my btn i'm going to paste the id of the pop over which is my pop over copy it coming back to the script.js file and i'm here pasting the code again i'm going to copy this second line of code and pasting it into one more time and then i'm going to change the name here to close button so close btn and then i'm going to change the id of this button to close btn so in this project we have used the id selector which is the get element by id to select the ids now we have successfully fetched the elements inside the script so we have a reference to the elements so after that we need to add the listener to this my btn so i'm going to type here my btn dot add event listener and inside of that we need to specify the listener that we are going to listen for it so we are going to use the click listener and after that we need to use the function then i'm going to specify the brackets of the function and then the body of the function here you can use the terminator okay and after that inside of this we need to use the my popover so we're going to update its class list so this is the class list is equal to add and when we click on the button we are going to make this as active so once i save it and if i click on this button then you can see nothing is working now the reason for that it's not working is because inside the style.css file i have forgot to add two lines of the code the reason for that i didn't add that particular line of the code is because i want to show this problem to you three how to fix it so for that we need to provide the popover before element and then we need to add the code inside of it so the first thing is i'm going to type the popover active so this is a popover so when our popover is active we want to actually change its display property from none to block so that it can be visible so if i here set the display to block then you can see when the Pop over button is active state then it's going to display its entirely block means going to cover the our button if i come back to the script.js file here we have just only add the active so if i just uh, again control save it then you can see it's actually 
not changing so if i refresh it then the we, our pop power is gone and the button is displayed so in order to add the close button functionality we want to set the listener to the button and we have to use the remove function so i'm going to copy this block of code and pasting it one more time here i'm going to replace it with the close button which is the close btn and inside of that instead of using the add verb function we are going to use here a remove function now if i click on the button then you can see if i close it then it's actually going to close the button as well so now our code is actually working perfectly fine so if i refresh it and if i click on it and if i want to remove the popover then you can see if i click it so that marks the completion of the code now our project is successfully developed the only piece of information of the only code that is missing is actually this popover.active code which is missing that is why the click functionality of the popover is not working so when i click on it then this is not going to work so if i remove it and control save it if i click it then you can see nothing is working because we want to change the active state of the popover to blog one more thing i want to give you just for the experimental purpose if i use here a flex then you can see our popover will look like this so you can add a profile icon like the button should be displayed first in a rounded circle then you can create a profile pop-up by using this particular code okay and yes i'm changing back it to blog because that is the application that we want to develop okay so that's marks the completion of this particular project inside this lecture so if you like this lecture then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my future courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to create the ASCII and Unicode character detector application. So this will be the final application that we are going to build in this particular lecture. So you can see it has a nice white card like effect and it has a text ASCII and Unicode character. We can see that the heading. Then we have this input type and then a detect button. So if we type here a character like it can only accept a one character because there is a like a max length attribute is specified inside the tag of the input so if i click on the detect then it's going to return the entered character is an ascii character or if i go with the google and here if i type the like uh, ascii unicode like if i have to actually use here ascii unicode tables if i just simply go there i have actually misspelled it so if i just completely research with it because i want to teach you what will be the output of the ASCII character so you can see these are all ASCII characters and these are the unicode characters so if i just simply come copy this copyrighted one which is this c just by copy this one and coming back to the our application paste it and if i detect it then you can see it's a unicode character so this will be the application that we are going to build in this particular lecture so the first step is to actually start with the html code So here you can see I have already created a project inside my Visual Studio code and also I have created the style.css file and also my script.js file. So I am going to give the title to this project which is ASCII and Unicode character. So it's going to like ASCII, ASCII and a slash Unicode, Unicode character. Character detector okay so this will be the title for this project and also i'm going to link my css file so actually this file is present in the same directory where i have actually placed my index.html file and also i'm going to link my script.js file script src and the name of our file is script so now the both files is now linked with our html so the first thing is we need to start with the creation of this container okay and then we need to place these three elements and also this one to display the final result of the logic okay so this will be the screen we need to build so again i'm going to click on this to see the output and the input of the code so that i can see the output once i type the code inside the visual studio 
okay so the first step is i need to create the container so i'm pressing the dot and here using the container and then pressing the tab key so it's going to give me the uh, container of div okay and everything will be present inside this container okay so i'm going to click on it and inside of this i will be specifying the first which is the h1 element pressing the tab key so it's automatically complete the text means the tag and then we need to give the heading as x key unicode character detector so i'm going to copy this title from here and paste it inside the h1 element so this will be the h1 tag now i'm going to launch this application by using this live server extension so if i click it then you can see it's going to launch the application into my browser so here you can see now our application is now perfectly working so the next element we need is actually the input type so this will be the next element we need to specify after the h1 element so i'm going to use here the input type so input type is going to be like text because we need to identify the character value so we are going to leave it as a text because we need to find out the like character of both whether it's number text or alphanumeric character or maybe a special symbol okay so that is why i'm going to leave the type as text then we need to specify the id now this id will be used to specify the logic so i'm going to specify the id as character input then for accepting only a single character here we need to specify the max length property so i'm going to specify only one if i save it then you can see we get the input if i don't specify this max length right now you can see if i press the multiple times key then it's going to accept only a single character and if I just simply remove this property max length and here if I type many characters so you can see it's going to accept multiple characters but our logic is designed in such a way that it's going to only take the first character and the rest of them is actually ignored so it's better to actually restrict the user to add the character more than once so I'm going to again specifying this max length property by pressing the control Z so it's going to give me the max length attribute inside this particular HTML element okay so the next we need a placeholder so placeholder is going to be like enter uh, text or you can say that the character character will be more meaningful like here okay so it's going to be like enter a character so this will be the placeholder text for the this particular input if i control save it then you can see enter a character is now appearing inside the input element and the next element that we need to specify is the button so it's going to have button and this will be having a text like detect detect and inside of this button we need to specify the attribute which is on click so inside the on click i'm going to call the function or you can say that the yes it is going to be the function like detect character ect so i'm actually here mistype the name of the function so it's going to be like character detector also and we need to specify the rounded brackets and then the final element that we need is to display the result for that we are going to use the paragraph element and we need to specify the id to this paragraph element as a result once i save it then you can see we are able to see the all elements inside the screen so we are going to style it by using the style.css which is our next step now our next step is to start with the css part of this particular project so for that we need to use the style.css file so inside of that style.css file first i'm going to select the body element and inside the body first i'm going to change the font family so font family we are going to use like uh, arial helvetica so this will be the font that now you can see the font is now changed and then we need to use the background color so background color i will be using here a 5 8 and 7 6 and this will be a d8 so which is for the bluish color and after that i will be using here a display property so display is going to be like flex once i do that then you can see nothing is changing then we need to specify the like our justify content is going to be like center and then we need to use the align item properties which is also going to be center and then we need to use the height property so height is going to be like 100 vh once i do that then you can see this is now 
querying inside the center of the browser okay so again i'm going to maximize or minimize it next to resize it sorry not to maximize or minimize then the next step is we need to actually provide the style for this container okay so we're going to do that okay i actually control save it inside the browser because my cursor is actually on the browser so i'm going to copy this class name of the container and coming back to the style.css file inside of it i'm going to paste the code and then start the block of the code for this container element now inside of this container element first we need to specify the background color which is going to be like white so hashtag three times f it's going to give us the black white color so you can see now the white color is appearing so i'm going to just little bit decrease the size of this visual studio code window okay and then you can see the output is now much clear way and then we need to use the border radius so border radius is going to be like five pixel so that we can get the nice bordered card and then to use the padding so padding is going to be like 20 pixel once i save it then you can see the inner space of the text is actually increased means the container and between the text the spacing is now increased then we need to use the box shadow property which is i used quite a lot in this particular course so you must be know how to use it this particular box shadow and then i'm going to use here a 10 pixel then rgba function rgba not rbg then here i will be using 0 0 0 and for the alpha is going to like 0 0.2 once i save it then you can see there is a nice like uh, shadow is appearing inside this particular project okay or you can say that the body element and then we need to use the max width property so max width is going to be like 400 pixel so you can see now the size is actually decreased which we actually want and then we need to actually just leave it as with the max width property because the rest of the properties is not required for this particular project okay okay so that's for the after specifying the max width property the container code is now completed the next step is we need to stylize this h1 element because in our project if i just simply maximize it then you can see it's appearing in the two line but uh, in our final product it's actually appearing in a single line so to do that we need to provide the style to our this particular h1 element okay so for that here i will be using the h1 element directly because there is right now only one heading tag is available which is our h1 so inside of it i will be using the font size property so again it's resizing the window of the browser and here first i need to use the font size property so the font size is going to be like 24 pixel so once i do that then you can see the size of the font is decreased okay and then i need to use here a text align property so text align is going to be like center of the screen means the container and then we need to provide the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to be like 20 pixel okay then we need to style this input type so i'm going to directly selecting the input element and using here a type selector attribute so type selector not attribute type selector is equal to text so we need to specify it inside the double quotes so it's going to like text and then we need to use the block of the code for the css so the first property that i'm going to specify is the width property so width is going to be like 95 percent save it and you can see the once i specified the width property the button is now appearing in the next line if i just remove this width property then you can see button and both this input type is now appearing in a single line so again i'm just using here a uh, so 95 percent and then the next property we want is the padding so padding is going to be like from all sides 10 pixel so now you can see the sizes of the input type is increased and then we need to use here a color property which is like for the black i think yes it's going to be like black or if i save it then if i type the character then it's going to have a black if i use here a hashtag fff then it's going to give us a white character which is not visible so i will be using here a black one three times zero it's going to give us a black color okay and the next property we want is the border so when you want to specify the border or i can go with the border property 
and what uh, is going to like one pixel solid and also going to specify here hashtag cc which is for the border color right now you can see the border is slightly gray now this color property is not required because by default the color of the input type is black so i'm going to remove these color property and after that i need to provide the border radius is going to be like 5 pixel so that we get the rounded corners and then we need to use the margin bottom property because right now the button and like uh, this input type is now pairing very close to each other so we need to specify the margin bottom property once i did that then there is a space between these two elements so that's max the completion of the code for the input type for the css part so our next step is to actually start with the code of this button so selecting the button element directly by using the tag name because right now there is only one button is available inside the index.html so the first property i'm going to specify is 10 pixel so 10 pixel from top and bottom and 20 pixel from left and right so you can see now the button size is increased because there is an inner space between the button text and the container is increased that is why and then the next is we need to use the background color property so background color is going to be like bluish one so this will be the color we are going to use for the background then we need to specify the color property so we need a white color and then we need to remove the border so the border is going to be like none and then we need to use the border radius so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel okay so the next is and the last and another property that we want is the font weight property is going to be like bold and then the last property that we need to specify is the cursor property so cursor pointer so when we hover over the button then we see a pointer instead of the arrow and then we need to use the button which is the most popular one for like everyone use it which is hover inside of that we need to use the background color property so the background color we need to change it a little bit darker so it's like 4, 4, 8 and then we have A, F, F so this will be the color so if I hover over it then you can see there is a slightly light color than the previous button means previous color okay so that's now the completion of the code for the button the last element that we need to provide this style is the result element so I'm going to copy this it's having an id attribute so we need to use here a hash symbol and then we need to paste the name of the id and inside of that we need to provide the font size so the font size is going to be like 18 pixel and then we need to provide here a text align property so the text align is going to be like in the center of the screen and after that we need to specify the margin top property which is like 10 pixel so if i just type here a some text like this is the result save it then you can see this will be the output that is appearing inside the paragraph element okay so i'm going to just leave it as this text here because once we click on the button then this particular text will be updated inside the javascript logic which is our next step so our next step is to start with the javascript part of the project so for that we need to use the script.js file now inside of that first we need to specify the function which is detect character because inside the html element of button we have specified the on click event which is which will invoke the detect character function so i'm going to copy the name of this detect character function and coming back to the script.js file so here i will be writing the function keyword and then i will be specifying the name of the function which is detect character and start the body of the function not the square ones we need the curly brackets and before specifying the code inside of this function we need to create a function which is going to return the sk character which is going to check for the sk character because we are going to use this simple if else condition if it is an sk character then we need to display the message sk character so we are going to check for the one condition okay because that is an easy because sk character actually ranges from 0 to 127 so there are only 128 sk characters whereas the unicode characters are those characters which has more than 128 characters it supports lots of characters like geeks characters and chinese character as well and also supports some emojis as well okay so it is more advanced than the sk character if you want to know more about these two particular character set then you can simply google it 
and I have already Google it by using this Brave browser. You can see here you can see inside the table of the SK table. This is started from zero and it's actually ended here 127. So there are total 128 SK characters. Whereas a Unicode character has some added some more of them. You can see it has 8000. Like there is so many Unicode characters. And right now they are actually this particular table is showing the most common used one. So you can Google it and you will get the result. But you don't need to actually learn all of these characters. And I actually recommend you don't try to learn these characters because whenever you want it, you have a Google. You can simply go and get the code of the character if you want to use it inside your website. Okay. So don't try to learn these characters and all of them. Just get some basic knowledge about it. So that you can develop this basic project and also the conditions of this project is not super hard. So coming back to the script part of the project. So first I'm going to specify the function keyword and uh, then we need to specify the function name which is sk. Okay and then the bracket of this particular function. So it's going to accept a character which we will get from the input type enter a character. So it's going to accept a character. So I'm going to type it here character is going to accept an argument okay and inside of that we need to first to fetch the elements which is the id of this particular input type button and also the result so we need to fetch the ids of all of these three elements so the first thing is i'm going to type here const so const then the name of the which is our character input so character input so it's going to handle the character input then it's going to have document dot get element by id then we need to specify the id okay so coming back to the html part so this is the character input copy it and coming back to the javascript part so i'm going to paste it after specifying the id of the character input we need to specify actually make changes inside this line of code the character input need to be specified inside the double quotes so i'm going to save it then i'm going to copy this line of code one more time for the result one so here i will be typing the result result and inside of this i need to also type the result because the id of this particular paragraph element is result so we don't need to fetch the id of this button because actually it is we have specified the on click event inside the button and there is no id we have used inside this button element okay so we need to fetch the id elements of these two elements which is input type and also the paragraph element so after specifying the id inside the javascript means we have now bind the input elements inside the javascript now we have access of it so we can apply our logic so first i'm going to add the line of code inside this particular is ascii function so we are going to return directly we are going to return a character because this particular function is accept an argument so obviously it's going to return a character so character dot we are going to use here a function which is a char code so there is a pre-built function in available inside the javascript which is our char code so actually we need to use here char code at so this will be the function we are going to use so whatever index we will specify to this function it's going to return a value means a character value okay and we are going to check with this particular char code function whether it's a ascii code character or a unicode character so we need to add a condition also so for that we need to use here a zero and equal to sign because we want to check for the 127th character as well so this particular char code function gives you an unicode character value so suppose if you specify here like 65 which is a capital a character so the unicode value of 65 is actually means the unicode value i will say the a if i go to the table the 65 is actually equal to a means the unicode value of 65 is actually a so if i say the, the right thing or i can say that the in 65 position we have a capital a so you can see this is the decimal notation of the a character so that is what we actually so there are total 127 ascii character and we have more than like uh, 128 unicode characters means 
the unicode corrector is more advanced than like i previously explained okay so that is why we have specified here 127 so whatever index means the whatever character we will pass if it is lies between the 0 to 127 then it is actually going to be a unicode character if we specify a character inside this input type which has an index value is actually greater than this 127 then it's actually a unicode character so with the unicode character return function because this function will always return a unicode character but with that logic this particular condition we are able to check for the ascii and unicode character both okay so i think it is like little confusing for you but if you just simply try to understand you will get the point what's actually going on in this particular line of code okay so this particular function does what is actually going to return a unicode value whatever index is specified but with the use of this function and with this condition we are able to check for the ascii code if the value that is specified inside of this input i say like capital a so capital a decimal value is actually 65 so 65 is smaller than this 127 so it's going to return a ascii character it means we need to specify more conditions inside this particular detect character function so we are going to do that and unicode character also has this ascii character so that is why this particular char code will also work with ascii character as well because this unicode character set has ascii as well because it is this unicode character is slightly more advanced than this ascii one if you google it a uh, wikipedia article then you will get the complete idea now coming back to the this function which is our detect character we need to specify more code inside of it so again we need a variable to actually get the character so we need to use the character and here we need to convert the character input into value because right now we are getting the text so we need to use a value so not a real it's actually a simple value and after that we need to check for the condition so here we are going to check for the if is ascii we are going to use the function and pass the character so right now we are passing the character which we are getting from the character input as a value so if it's an ascii character which is then we need to return or i can say that the result value inner html will be updated or i can say that the inner text not the html we want to update the text of the paragraph element because we have access to the result okay which is a paragraph element so input text is equal to then i'm going to use here a the enter which is a nice message enter character is an ascii character okay so this will be an ascii character if it is nice between the 0 to 127 and if it is not then obviously it's going to be a unicode character so i'm going to copy this line of code to save a little bit of time and inside of that i'm going to type here a unicode okay so that's okay so that's marks the completion of the code for this entire project if i control save it and try to run this so here i will be writing a five means typing a five if i click on detect the entered character is an ascii character if i here type one then if i click on the detect then you can say it's still an ascii character so we need a unicode character to check whether this particular block of code is working for the unicode character one or not so for that i'm coming back to our table so here what i'm going to i'm simply going to copy this pi symbol copy this and coming back to my google chrome and here i will be pasting this pi symbol if i click on the detect the enter character is a unicode character because right now the decimal notation of this is actually 182 and it is actually greater than this value of this 127 so that is why it's actually a unicode character so guys that's marks the completion of this particular project which is our ascii and unicode character detector project so if you like this course then please leave a review because your review will definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses and also it's going to help me to increase the quality of my future courses okay so that's it for this lecture thank you for watching and i will see you in the next time in the next course thank you for watching